Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. February 15, 2023. Sioux City, City Council, budget session. Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. February 15, 2023. Sioux City, City Council, budget session.
Test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. February, February 15, 2023. Test, test, one, two, three. Sioux City, City Council. Budget session, test, test, one, two, three. Test, test, one, two, three. February 13, 2023. Test, test, three.
Moore? Here. O'Kane? Here. Shainer? Here. Scott? Here. Waters? Here. Good morning. We'll start with the CIP discussions and reports for the um, FY24 budget wrap up. The first item is Project 889012 Annual Field Services Facilities Maintenance and Consolidation. CIP page 66, report page 6. I understand we have a written document, signed document, on the land acquisition. I thought maybe that would have been included in here. Yeah, Mike Collette, Assistant City Manager. Yes, we do. I'll let Marty speak to that. He's had direct communication with the landowner. It's signed. We have a signed LOU. Yes. We can get copies. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I just haven't seen any copies, and that's what I'm waiting for, I think. And three years, right? Three years is how long the price will hold? On, the, the, on the second part. On the second part. That's parcel. correct. Okay. All right. Same price. Great. Additional items or questions on that one? I think that's exciting. Yeah. Yes. That. Item number three on the agenda, page, uh, excuse me, project 749084 annual airport capital projects. CIP page number 72, report number seven or page number seven. Thanks for that report, Mike. You bet. Very thorough. The highest engineering, does that include inspections of 20%? It does. Maybe other engineers in the city should look at those numbers. And that's at the high side, normally, that 20%. Usually we're in that 15 to 18. And again, just to recap what's on here, it goes through two other outside engineers to look at as well, the FAA engineer and the independent engineer other yeah. than who we contract with. Right. As so you have more sets of eyes on it. Yeah. And because it's their money, it's 90 or 95 percent their money. So they want to make sure it's spent wise too. Item number four. Yeah, I want to go back. Oh, I want to okay. ask one question because okay. these t hangers are going to come up. I want to know what you're going to do with those t hangers because sometimes around here it must be my old age because you you tell me that I should have known that and I don't. I've seen nothing. That, I, I just don't think that we should continue to give these to, to fixed base operations without some more recoup of our costs. Like and compensation what. for that or something, yeah. We'll, we'll negotiate the, what those rates are um, when we build them um, with the FBO, either one or both of them. It's kind of undecided on how best is to allocate that out to the FBOs since there's two of them now as well. The uh, best way is to let them both bid on it and the high bidder wins. We'll definitely have that discussion. Okay. Okay. And how soon are they going to start to get out of the ground? They're projected to be done this fall. You haven't bid them yet, have you? We have not. They're under design right now to be bid. They're made of steel, so good luck. Yep. They're about four months lead time. Okay. Item number four, project 611001, City Share New Residential Development, page 84, CIP page 84, report page eight. If I read your memo correctly, the dig funds are spoken for for FY24? That's correct. So we'll be looking at FY25. What impact do you think that'll have, Marty? developments that are I, I think it's okay because we're working on a number of projects as you know but the lead times are long enough that you can budget them for uh, for the future so I wish we I wish we had more in the next year but but we'll you know we've got a lot of projects and a lot of different uh, sources of funds for those but this is really important to paying for infrastructure and I I think that the additional funds in the later years we can use to um, plan for additional projects Okay, thank you. Item number five, Project 663164 Business Park Tech Studies, CIP page 92, report page 9. Have there been any recent legislative proposals that we were waiting on? 
we, uh, we haven't seen one yet, but, but Debbie Durham was talking about one. And there, there's one for the Megasite program, and then there's a, a not, we we're expecting another one as part of their um, normal funding, pro, their normal program. So we're, we're going to keep an eye on that. We've attended several webinars, and we're keeping an eye on the legislation that, uh, and if there, uh, that's pending. And if there is anything that passes, we'll certainly apply for it. We'll apply for, the question specifically here was about whether there were funds available now to help with business park studies, and there, there are not. But it's been talked about a lot, and we may see that this year okay. in the legislation. Thanks for monitoring that. Yeah. Marty, one last thing with this, just thinking about this and kind of watching and monitoring the legislation, but also what opportunities there are that we're not taking advantage of um, or not yet realized. I want to, I would just ask you whether it's you yourself or whether it's even um, uh, Bob uh, Padmore, just thinking about being in better communication with Debbie down in the state office. I know you, you communicate with her fairly regularly, but Julie and I, and I know Renee was there as well, um, just at the last visit that she had with Iowa's West Coast, she emphasized a few different times that, you know, the squeaky wheel gets the oil and that she's worked with a lot of different cities on different programs. And even if there isn't a program, but they come with a proposal or an idea of how they're willing to be creative and think about funding. And I mean, she, Renee can fill you in too, but I mean, she pretty much point blank said that Sioux City is not taking full advantage of all the resources that they have available and that she wants us to be competitive and wants us to be proactive in reaching out, but that <clears throat> sometimes she needs to wait for that correspondence from our side. So I think, I think, I think we just should be as proactive as possible. She gave a couple ideas that um, I'll, I'll talk with staff offline about what we can do and maybe pursue, but I would just ask, I think along the same line, anything that we can do to continue to reach out, I would appreciate your efforts. Very yeah, I, I, would, I would say we have often asked and yeah. sometimes been successful and sometimes not. Yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't able to be at that one particular yeah. meeting, but, but I, we'll certainly follow up on those and I'll yeah. Either Jill or, or Renee has a comment on those or not. But uh, uh, in one case, and there was also some discussion on the Washington, uh, on the uh, Des Moines trip that uh, that with the legislators, we had a meeting with the chamber with Debbie, and she she brought up a couple of things um, at that meeting. Maybe they were the same things. I'm not sure. But uh, one had to do with some IFA funding that I've actually talked with Jill about. I'm not sure Debbie was totally accurate on whether that was available or not. But we'll we'll certainly pursue that. And then the other thing she talked about was, was um, use of targeted jobs. And we're certainly well aware of that program. We've done about 55 projects in that. But, but um, it is, it, and it's a function of getting the good leads as well right. uh, from the state and from others in our, in our own uh, efforts to um, be able to use that program. We talk about that program all the time. We had a program uh, opportunity this, just this week, and we brought that up. So it's a great program. We've used it a lot, as you know. We'll continue to use it. And... Um, if there's some other ideas that she has, she has new responsibilities now. Her role has grown at the state level and will certainly pursue any suggestions that she makes. Well, she is asking us to bring her the suggestions and the ideas, her office, sure. and they may be able to structure a program around it. So she said, even if we don't have a program that that would fall under, we can make a new program. Sure. Develop yeah, one. Absolutely. And they have done that. Um, she gave a couple examples of a small business that did it in another town. And um, so she said, we've got money, we've got funding, and although it might not quite fit under a specific program. A few of the references she's making to federal funds, we, we, don't, we don't qualify for because we're an entitlement community, but generally they have those types of funds available, especially with a lot of the federal money now. But, but I think she's referring to state funds and help that her office can give us. So she just wants us to show up. That's what she okay. was saying. Be proactive. Right. Yeah. Be proactive Absolutely. and ask. Don't be afraid to We've, ask. So. And I think you do a great job. Right. I wasn't saying that, Marty, and I know you no, can be at no, every no. meeting. But I think Renee and I spoke afterwards, and I know Julie mm -hmm. had some conversations as well. And I think in your role, I think that's where you can be an asset. And, and I know that for some of those programs. Renee wants to mention it, but we've, Renee's been pursuing um, <laughs> a number of different grants for 
I, uh, I West Coast. In fact, you were just talking about. Yeah, this. I am actually headed to Des Moines March 9th to meet with Debbie uh, regarding historic tax credits and a couple other programs that may help fund the Innovation Center. So yeah. we have Great. been in contact and we are Great. different opportunities. Because that was one of them that she talked about that she liked and that thought it was creative. And then the other one was addressing homelessness and different creative programs that they had that I think would spur development and fit under yours as well as Jill's kind of area too. So. We've never been shy about applying, so. Great. <laughs> Why don't you tell her to do a tiny home? I'm excited. I'm sure that that it won't be easy to get through our design review committee, but the uh, Critton and Center's article on tiny mm -hmm. homes. Mm-hmm. That was very... As you know, I've been for that for a long time, but we just don't seem to ever really want to do anything to kick that in around here. We want to make it difficult with lot sizes. We want to make it difficult with sewer hookups. We want to make it difficult in a lot of reasons, none of which make any sense to me if we really want to, so it's, you know, I just, go ahead and tell me I'm wrong, but it... No, Jill Wanderscheid, Neighborhood Services Manager. I can provide a little bit more information on how that project is a little bit different. Um, so usually you're right with um, lot sizes, that always becomes an issue. Um, because they have a main structure on site, they're considered accessory structures, and that's how we can um, get those through. So like a little bit different. Structure, I, I, it falls under that? Hmm? It falls under like an appurtenant structure? Yeah. Yeah, oh. basically an accessory structure. That's what I'm saying. Why can't... I don't well, understand. I just had a, a conversation with a developer who's got a small piece of land that he would like to look into that. So it was a very positive conversation. And I said, you know, I would be in favor of something like that if there was someone living on site to help manage the grounds and, you know, to help the whoever's going to be renting the, the spaces living there to help them with their daily needs. <clears throat> and he said that was their intent. So... Hopefully, I'll have some more conversation. So al along those lines, too, um, Dan and I were at a meeting um, at Simcoe had right before the legislation session started, and there was a really interesting guy there that made a presentation on our oh. cities building the right kind of housing for the needs that we have. And I was, I was fascinated by, uh, by those. He had data to back it up. And... Um, uh, with the price of housing. So I, I think we, we need to be looking at it. We are looking at um, all different forms of housing in different sizes and shapes. And um, it, it, the data shows that a lot of times it's, it's the lack of the exact kind of housing that, that the market needs. Um, for example, I'm, uh, moving, moving um, empty nesters out of the big homes they have into, into townhomes and things, we need more of those as well to free that up for, for younger people to be able to buy because it's so expensive to build a new one. So I, 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 that was an eye-opening presentation for me, Dan. I know you talked about it, too, and I, I think that we'll pursue as a team here all, all, all the kinds of different housing options that can help solve our, our, our need for good quality housing. I really believe that when I see an area set aside for tiny homes. I'm not saying to put them in a regular neighborhood, but we don't allow them anywhere under our present code. Yeah, we have to look at the codes. I, it, you're it's right. certainly going to take some code amendments. Yeah. Okay. I'll just add one more thing. I think the, the issue has been that the minimum um, square footage size is 640. So, yeah, it would be something that would have to change. Right. And, and you still would have a minimum lot size that makes no sense under those circumstances. That, that's my point. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks, Marty. Item number six, project 719-201, Southeast Morningside Area Improvements, CIP page 136, report page 10. I included a memo that provided some additional information. I also went back to the council action that was taken in the year 2000 and pulled the annexation agreement that everyone actually signed. And... Um, According to our staff, um, the discussions around this started back up again when the DOT property was annexed in. Um, it looks like from our agreement that we agreed to do the design for the utilities by January 1 of 2004. And so this just got brought up again when they were looking at the city limits around the new um, DOT property. And so then it got added back in the book, I believe, 
was that a year ago, two years ago? <coughs> and so that Just was the, the reason. going down behind Menards? Mm-hmm. That was a settlement of a lawsuit. It was... Buell property at the time. Yep. I remember it well, because <laughs> I got named personally and didn't even know what it was about. Buell Turkey Farm? Huh? Family? Yeah, it was the Buell Farm down below, and... Uh, and the, uh, their, their lawsuit made some sense, not really, but because why did we put that bridge there if our intent wasn't to put a street there to connect? If you notice, there's a bridge that, that nothing goes under. Mm -hmm. about, about where the corner of Whispering Creek stuff begins, there's a bridge there. And that's where you're talking about, the utilities are gonna go under that bridge, I think. Right. I don't know the specifics, specifics yeah, of that. It, because they said we promised them different things over the years and never delivered. And I think this was a result, because that was about when I got sued, that it was a result of, of that lawsuit to settle it. We agreed to do a study at least or something out there. So we are, we're legally bound to do a study or? To design the design utilities it. needed to service that area that's in the hash mark on the map that I have there. Everyone within that area, well, 23 of the 25 property owners at the time signed it, they're recorded. Um, so I, I don't know why it was never moved forward prior to 04, but going back, I think that was the reason why this, this sheet was added a couple of years ago. Project 879018 West 7th Street Corridor Improvements, CIP page 140, report page 15. Um, after our discussion, I went back, and I'm, I'm hoping I interpreted what everyone was saying correctly, um, but going to the four-way stop, that would be Ross Street over on West 7th and Villa, um, and then catching that area between West 7th and Wesley Parkway. Um, just a couple quick things about each area. The program, and I get, it would be up to you to change as well, but the program is really uh, geared towards commercial properties. We don't typically do residential. Um, and so looking at the area that's added on the west side, there's about 16 commercial properties in that area. The rest are all residential. And then between West 7th and Wesley, there's about 17 commercial properties. The rest are residential there too. Um, so it would be my recommendation if we did extend that we would limit it, continue to limit it to commercial properties. Um, within the current boundary of West 7th, 38 properties have participated or they're under construction right now or under agreement with us. There's probably under 10 um, left that I've ever talked to that are still interested. So we're getting near the end of that for sure. And I mean, I, you know this area well. Don't you think it makes sense for some of those properties? Like, I know Matthew and I were talking about a couple of them mm -hmm. that I think would be good candidates. And I think extending that area, it's revitalizing yeah. that corridor. Um, and I think that your language addition makes sense. You know, none of us are trying to do anything residential. So even just including that, I think is just a smart move mm -hmm. in any of the areas that we do because this area is not unique. You might have that up in maybe Riverside or maybe Leeds or something like that. I don't think any of the other ones necessarily, but yeah. And what we can do as a part of this too is we can target these two areas when we're doing um, the commercial projects um, for our residential rehab programs too. We'll make sure we send out notices to them at the same time, letting them know that we have those pro and kind of do like a mini target area yeah. for those too. I was just going to ask about that. <laughs> Good. Yes, and those two can go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes when you see your neighbor doing something, you do it, you know, something similar or get your juices flowing. Over, over the years, I've, I've had citizens comment from time to time about it would be nice to have a program for residential, but that'd be, that, that'll be a huge undertaking. And we do, um, all of our programs, they do have to income qualify for, so sometimes that's a roadblock, but we do a lot of residential rehab throughout the whole city um, every year or so. And we did just receive those healthy homes funding, so we're doing radon mitigation everywhere we go. It gives us more funding to spend on each house, so you can always send them our way, and we can at least talk through and see if they would possibly income qualify. That's on an as-need, case-by-case basis. I, yeah, they're, they're talking in terms of targeting maybe a corridor like we do at the commercial. Well, we do do yeah. that. Yeah, we, so um, we, 
Yeah, so Lions Park is one that we're doing, that we're targeting yeah. right now. Yeah. Doing a lot of full rehab in yeah. that area, yeah. We just don't have the money we used to have. We used to get double the amount of CDBG funds a year that we get now. So it's really hard to have multiple areas at once. So we have the citywide kind of emergency, and then we have the tar one target area right now. Thank you. I really appreciate that you, you looked into this. I took Villa on the way here um, down to West 7th, and it really is just, um, I, I see a lot of possibility, and it's been such a hugely successful program. I can't believe there's only 10 businesses that have not participated. Well, 10 that I... I've talked to that haven't said no. Okay, they haven't said no. Yeah, I like that. There's the other ones have said no, not interested for whatever reason. So I would say under ten of like, oh maybe. So. So then you'll circle they, back and. Yeah. Yeah. And Jill, I know that you've thought about this. Well, you and I worked at least on one of the properties, mm -hmm. a seventh thinking about accessibility as well. Like when they are renovate or no, we did two. Yeah. Out and mm -hmm. Yep. Um, I think that some of these older properties, and I've talked now with probably three different business owners that are not in these type of districts, but everyone is looking, like everyone I talk to and whether they're just giving me lip service, I don't know, <laughs> want to make their space more accessible and more accommodating, but that can be expensive. I understand, you know, trying to update, trying to do those things can be pretty costly and sometimes it's an <laughs> opportunity like yeah. a grilling pharmacy they didn't realize that a push button type entry you know system wouldn't really <laughs> qualify so that's something mm -hmm. that i think just yeah anything we can do to talk to them about improved accessibility because some of these are more historic structures or a little more out of date and so i appreciate it Next project, Thanks, project Jill. Thank you, Jill. 379010, Tyson Event Center Remodel and Repair, CIP page 152, report page 17. Good morning. Following the initial discussion, we did reach out to IT because they were the ones that provided the initial budget number of 90000 We asked if they would visit with Tyson Event Center staff and actually go to the facility. They did. They looked over everything, and they have an adjusted estimate of $77,000. From the 90000 Yes. That, that we had. I yeah. have a question for you on your note on page 17 mm -hmm. about the replacement, the re switch upgrades, 30000 and yes. additional network cabling. What What is that in What's, what's I don't the know the specifics of all the technical stuff of that. Um, that would be an IT question. But they just said that as a note as to why it's a little bit more expensive. They said that in all the other city facilities, they already have done those processes, and they just haven't done that in this facility I yet. Um, yeah, it, so when we do the new phones, we have to do all of this, too. Part of it. Trying to get everybody the same throughout the city. Yes. Yeah. Is the 77, then? Uh, does that encompass the 30 and the 16? Yes. They're just explaining why it's more money than you would initially think for phones. Not sure. just the phone. Sure. Yes. There was exactly that. Yes. Get back. You don't have to say I would. Right. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Jess. Project 459005, Annual Athletic Maintenance. CIP page 188, report page 18. Talking about $12,000 shelter and just a little over $10,000, about $11,000 for the six three row bleachers. Matt Salvatore, Parks and Recreation Director. Yes, that's their list of anticipated improvements with the, with the funds that are available. I haven't turned in their paperwork board. yet, so we're withholding those until they, we they give us everything we need, but they're eager to get going with those, so they're working with us on that. How big is their shelter? I will have to check. 12 by 12? Yeah. 19. You know, at our church, we put a... Th probably a 30 by 50 for less than that money, so that must be one nice shelter. Showing on page 19. That's just an advertisement, though. Yeah. Because if you look at the... It ranges from 6 by 12 to... Yeah, it's just showing you what it will, what it can look like, one of the models. But it's, over, it's right at $100 a square foot. But up here it says, yeah, that is 100 bucks a square foot. That's a lot. Thank you for well, open-ended 
What I was wondering too, Matt, That's is... because it's a kit. I don't know who built this one, but it reminded me a lot of... Um, I couldn't get out there to see them, but it, at least it looks like the ones at the cheese uh, pickleball sure. courts. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. In between, isn't that essentially... it's a mirrors our our style? Yeah, yeah. And so I wonder. What I think they... that one was close to this price as well. I was going to say I it just all depends on the bid quality and, and the look. Was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's expensive because it's a kit. Everything's pre-cut and ready for them. No, but they all are. Those guys Everything. came in from Kansas City at our church, and they started at oh. 5 o'clock, and 9.30 they drove away. Oh, okay. Like machines putting that together. Well, I would just hope, Matt, and I know your staff will work through this, but thinking long-term about where this goes and how that works into the space, if we would reutilize or do something different out there, you know how to Oh, yeah, absolutely. Work. Just being proactive with that. I think it'll get used no matter what. Oh, yeah. You know, for... Either. I just mean as far as placement. You know what I mean? You don't want to pour a pad and have all right. of that infrastructure right. and then have be like, care. gosh, we really should have reconfigured this to a different area or a different area made sense. Has that spot yeah, already been decided for sure? I know. Now? What's that? But that's that's where this spot where this is going to land, has it already been decided? No, we're going to work with them on that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. But yeah, to the mayor's point, if they're underutilizing those fields and the city needs to reassess, what are we doing with that land? Is there some other better way to repurpose or reuse or different contract? I just want us to have some flexibility with The that. goal would always be to maximize the amount of playing space out there. We don't want to put a shelter where we could have a field. So yeah. that will be taken under consideration. Did they, uh, do they lock the field so nobody can get on there? Right. It just, to me, is it? Not always, but I would say most of the time. Unbelievable tragedy to have that complex and drive by every day. I, I think we need to have these guys come and explain. And, and Witt called me yesterday. Yeah, but they had a good meeting last night. Yeah, I'd like to make sure that we stay on top of that. Witt yeah. did not have to go find a field to play soccer when there's one a block away from the... <coughs> no, that was about a two-hour meeting, and it was, there was a lot of cooperation both, both ways. They're on, the, hey. they're on the same page. I'll give you a formal update on that. They're working on a couple more details. Okay, very good. Well, Thanks, I will be watching those fields again this year, and if those fields are not being used, I hope that we will do something different because I, it's, it's, it's really not easy to drive to the Riverside or to the South Sioux field mm -hmm. to try to get out after soccer games are over on one road. Yeah, and we've communicated that to them and um, told them what our desires for their usage of the complex to be, and their lease is up on December 31st. Thank you. Okay. Of Before this year. Oh. December 31st of this year. All the leases are up on December 31st. We keep them on the same schedule. I had a question about um, last year. So last year we had um, some additional ARPA funds that, that we funneled into some of these athletic fields. Do we have a list of the improvements that were made within this last year? Yeah, we have all their work plans on file. Okay. Yep. Could you possibly send a memo yep. out about that? It doesn't affect this year's budget at all, but it's still just as a nice to know. Thank you very much. Yep. Project 459058 Emerald Ashboro, CIP page 202. Report page 22. Uh, we had some discussion about this at the CIP budget hearing, and we have no problem uh, knocking that down to about $500,000 a year and using that as the work plan moving forward. Making motions on this stuff as we go. Yes. So, we'll, how, how, I guess I'm kind of curious, uh, is the contract, they're picking the trees up, Mm -hmm. We let them just lay there for, in the case on Douglas Street, they laid there for about two weeks, which was. Yeah, I didn't think it was going. That, I'll check on that. I didn't think they were supposed to be but staying that have, long. It's, it, it appears they're cleaning them. They've got big trucks now, and they're cleaning them as they go. But, I, I mean, I don't know that it's terribly bad, but it certainly makes you think when you it's hanging out over the edge of the road, you've got to be careful driving up Douglas Street, you did. So how did you pick, I'm just curious, how did you pick where, where you were going, how are you notifying, because 
I heard from one business owner on, you know, um, Oakley, or Oakview or whatever they call it, Oakley Properties, they didn't even know anybody was going to cut their trees. We, so, yeah, that, they, we went before either that everybody line. got a letter, and if we got a bounce back on the letter, they hand-delivered the, the yeah, notices. because so, Kelly explained that in the budget yeah. hearing. Because, Mayor, I heard the same thing. Or there were residents that yeah. were questioning why they were tagged or why they were marked, and Kelly explained that it was yeah, like, look, that's what I'm saying. That, that if all that's happening, why are we still getting people asking us what we're doing? And it's all so the, the, the one thing I could think of is if they don't own, correct, and the notice went to the owner and not the renter. And the people that I knew that were speculating were just saying, oh, all these trees are tagged and marked. What is it? Is it they right. thought maybe it was a road project? Yeah, so the they people weren't that the, weren't, they weren't the homeowners notified personally may have exactly. some questions. Yeah. Correct. If you want to, if you want to reduce those down, you have to do a motion. I'll move that. Second. I have a, Jane? Hi. I have a. I do have a question, Matt. So, is this a three-year workout program? It's 2024, 25, and 26. So it's a million and a half total. Five Ten years. Yeah, we had well, originally a, we had projected work program at half a million dollars a year. Yeah, so we originally had a million dollars a year for five years. So this would spread it. Out. But that's not. I don't know that originally, we don't know that it'll take that. We said it was going to be seven to ten million bucks. Before we don't know that it'll take that. Okay, and that and the tree stumps that are left, that are unsightly, those are going to be at least taken down to the level of the. Ground. I need to check on that. I think so. Is that what's going on in Jackson Street? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, they're not even. It's not even a clean cut on the stumps. I'll check on that. Yeah, back. it's pretty much an eyesore. Are you guys cut, taking the turn? I don't know. We're not well, doing any the of it. The other day when they were taking them down, your, your, uh, your tree uh, grinder was driving up okay. and stopped. So. Uh, some of those trees, Dan, you're referring to maybe for our 30th Street, uh, Pier Street project. No, or this we've... is down on like 12th Street, Gordon. Oh, on that one? Okay. It's, it's his contractor, I'm pretty sure, because it's that guy that's got that big claw that can take a tree down and never climb it, is what I, you're talking about, I think, aren't you? I, I, I think so. And then, well, and then the stumps, I, I think that was also in the contract, that those would be, they'd either be removed or, I, I don't remember if they were taken down. I can't imagine we would leave a stump yeah, there, so we'll, 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 we'll address that either way. That might just be a temporary Well, they'll thing. probably come in later and do With the grinder. I think their primary focus is getting the trees down. I would guess. And come back be. later. Okay. Yeah, if you could confirm that. Yep, I can do that. That'd be great. Thank you. Sorry. Matt, when they grind the voting. tree stump, do they usually wait until the... like the frost is out? If there's frost in the, yeah. in the ground, because they don't want to mess up blades. Yeah, we had a... Tree removal. And they're not going to take stumps out until spring. Right. I would they imagine. They back and ground yep. the stump out because it goes actually below the surface when they grind it in. So They'll get into the that's dirt. That's what's probably is what we're going to see then. We're I would imagine. Stumps, yep. We, but if they're all jagged to Dan's point, yeah, I, that might not be a good idea. Clean cut. Cleaner cut. That's what I want to really focus yeah. on. Okay. Okay. You want to start over on the vote? So now we okay. we're going to see stumps. Okay. Aye. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. I move uh, to reduce the Tyson Event Center by $13,000. Second. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. That's this 5 -0. Okay, next item, number 11. Those are the only two. Project 459059. IBP Ice Center Enhancement, CIP page 204, report page 22. Kirk Lukart of Sulane Utaki is here to provide a quick update on that. Yeah, on the raise, fundraising. Good morning. Take some of that Tyson stock and sell it and just fund it yourself. We appreciate all the good work you do. Well, if you haven't sold all your Tyson stock by right now, you're in big trouble. <laughs> I think you're probably right. <laughs> it's a mess. It's a mess. Can I have your name and address for the record, please? Oh, uh, Kirk Lukart, K-I-R-K, last name L-U-K-E-H-A-R-T. My address is 357 Murfield Court, Dakota Dune, South Dakota. Where are you at? 
Uh, and specifically relates to your budget hearing uh, notes you have here. Yesterday I spoke with a donor who wants to remain anonymous right at this point, who's committed the $50,000 to get us to our goal of $1.6 million. Excellent. <clears throat> Saying that, next steps, the, the estimate from FEH and Associates for the $1.6 million has some age on it. So yesterday, yesterday I authorized them to go out and hire a professional estimator to get us a more current uh, number and at that point in time we'll take a look at what the new estimate is and figure out next steps from there either that if either we will come back to the council and ask permission to move forward with the bidding process or we will continue to raise money to try to get to the new number uh, we have uh, some irons in the fire uh, relative to fundraising we haven't stopped we won't stop uh, we've got some pretty good uh, ideas of what uh, some new donors will do for us but the good job the deal, yeah the deal was if you reached your fifty thousand dollar goal then we yep. increase ours by seventy five thousand yep. okay standing to get my friend Lazard did What's you that? Oh, call oh, my oh. friend Lazard yet Bobby Robbie <laughs> no well yeah Robbie too yeah I am setting up a meeting with Lance Hedquist so so I could have known Lance for a long time as you know he's a big time hockey guy with his family and so forth and so I've got a meeting set with him to see what they will or won't do. At worst, he'll give me some names, maybe in South Sioux, who I can contact. Good. Thanks, to everybody. I'll move we increase the funding by seventy-five thousand. You say you'll move that? Second. I move it. Yes. No. Sorry, I didn't hear you. No. Scott. Aye. Waters. Aye. Moore. Aye. O'Kane. Aye. Shainer. Aye. Project 459212, Annual Lewis and Clark Park Improvements, CIP page 216, report page 22. We're getting Clark and joint, you're not caught under C. The that's joints, a, yeah. yes. That's a good And it is that, silicone. That, that, well, it might not be, but anyway. That's no, it says it right here in the proposal. Okay, that's a good plan. That, yeah, okay, so we're on you, the same page now. Daryl and I were talking, you were saying you were going to caulk the whole. Oh, not the seats themselves, under the seats where the joints are. Yeah. Yeah. That you should do. That's just good preventive maintenance. Yeah, it's time. Is this based on, did I read this right? It's a September 2021 bid. Yeah, it's we'll have to. The report. Yeah. So that's going to probably. We'll have to update it, but I, it wasn't for the full mount. So I, it's, it's just a, a little bit. There's a little bit of padding in the budget. What's our budget? 175. We don't need to change anything there. Project 459214, Aquatic, Compre Aquatic Comprehensive Plan, CIP, CIP page 218, report page 22. Justine's here. Let me grab her. You got creative. So we moved some money around so we can uh, accommodate uh, doing the splash pad in FY24. <laughs> I, yes, I did bring... Um, my sidekick, my partner in crime, <laughs> or one of. Um, so yeah, I was told that you guys were able to rearrange some money to possibly still make the splash pot happen this summer. Yep, I'll move that. Second. Waters. So it's for this summer, right? Is yeah. That, yeah, aye. Moore. Aye. O'Kane. Aye. Shainer. Aye. Dot. All right. Pass this 5 0. Thanks for your yeah, efforts thank on this. You. Thank you. Thank you so much for making this happen. Yeah. There's so many families that are going to greatly appreciate it, as well as my own. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. Thanks thank to the you. two of you. Project 459321, Floyd Trail Connector, CIP, page 224, report page 22. So it does appear that we're going to have to go the alternative route, which is an ideal. Uh, well, I'm curious, Matt. It, it says here that they don't want you on top of the of the dike. No, we can't. We can't be in the bank. Oh, you can't be in the bank. I guess I've read. So that. top of dike was good, which is where it is now. Um, well, not down there. It's not, not down there. Oh, okay. Well, on the existing Floyd Trail is. Yeah, 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 yeah right. Of That's dike. what I'm talking about. Yeah. But we were hoping to do this like we did on the Perry Creek Trail, where you're go actually going down go the down bank into it. Yeah. yeah. Why would they care? There's a there's a, a bench that, as they call it, I don't know what term that is with Army Corps of Engineers, that it's non-occupiable. Bench? 
Yeah, not like a bench that you sit on, but bench. like a shelf ledge. A sh in the yes. Bank. Yes. Is that what a bench is, Gordon? A ledge. So it's, is there a way to appeal that? Do you think? So this probably not, but even if there was the timeline of this project being destination Iowa, I don't know that we can, I don't know that we necessarily oh, yeah. give up on it long term, but for the purposes of this project, I think we're in the process of having to move forward with the alternative route. Yeah. So we'll go top of bank everywhere we can, but then we're kind of going up and around. The memo says you were consulting, so the consulting's done with the Army Corps. That's been yes. decided. Yep. Project 569001, Cemetery Improvement, CIP page 230, report page 24. Interesting. Yeah. Say there. <laughs> well, I mean, I still think that somebody should at least contact the old Morningside Country Club because the Graceland Cemetery is, for Morningside people, obviously is a preferred cemetery and you're not going to get people to go to Logan within where I would say 85% of the Morningside people don't even know where it is. So that's going to be a, di I mean, I'm, I'm glad you got a lot of land there, but it's going to be difficult. So maybe we finally will get out of the cemetery business, which I think is a mistake because look at mm -hmm. the private ones that are not maintaining. And we certainly don't necessarily want to take that over because I'm sure they've sold all the lots and money's gone. But as Kelly had mentioned last time, I think that conversation had be had has had happened in the past, but it's probably been a but while. They have no use for that land. Right. It's probably have. They, it's probably they, time to revisit that. Yeah. When they build we will do that division, and I'm not sure we do either. It's very hilly mm -hmm. on that back side, but it's it's attached to, and you could put a road off of Lincoln Way that would basically allow you to drive in there. I don't know. It just I I think we're. I, w I was somewhat shocked that there's only 8,800 lots left in Graceland. Graceland. Are we trending away from traditional burials? I feel like we are. Well, you're still selling lots every yes, year. Yes, we are. Yeah. <laughs> Based on the amount of deeds that I'm signing on a weekly basis, I would say not a, really not. Not a lot, mm -hmm. some. But people who have cremation still will bear. Yes. Burns too, so. Okay. The yeah, problem is. is the lots that nobody's ever going to use, but you can't do anything with. Why do we have ones that? Well, like my mom had four lots. Oh, mm-hmm. And two husbands and her, and that fourth lot's never going to be used. So. That is true. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have to think about a program for that. It can be resold, but it can be, but you have to find a. You got to find the owner and somebody to buy it. Yeah, right. one, you got to find one. I mean, I I just kept it in case somebody in our family had an emergency. Mm -hmm. like, or or almost one. if you could donate it back, because there are so many people that can't afford these. Things. Right, that's what I was just thinking about a program. You can donate it back, but you still have a cost in, associated with that in every cemetery. Because there's a deed with every. Right. They're uh, pretty, they're yeah. reasonable. Private cemeteries are not so reasonable. Mm -hmm. And to your point, not. It cost me. almost as much as an attorney to read an abstract. <laughs> Very pricey. It's the first time I've been compared to a cemetery. <laughs> <laughs> Things aren't looking too bright today for me. I, I don't know. I guess I'm the only one that feels that way, but I, I just think it would hurt at least. We'll have the conversation. Subject and see. And yeah, I think be proactive about it. I think that's a good idea. Project 138002, Annual Street Light Repair and Maintenance, CIP page 252, report page 33. After reading this report, I think you should never, we, we were sold a bill of goods when we said we should own our own street lights. 
And I, I'd I've, like somebody to do a cost analysis of what, what we're saving on the electricity a year on those lights and what we're paying a year for maintenance. I, I would agree with that. Um, first of all, I appreciate what staff does to make our own repairs, but 20, 20 repairs, $141,511, that's a lot of money. I wish we had a better way of doing this, but I'm not sure what that better way is, Mayor. It's well, I think they told us when we took over the streetlights back in the 90s that the difference in the rate, which I don't believe is that much difference, would justify, I don't think it does. And we ought to quit owning streetlights and make Mid America put them in again. It says Mid America owns and operates approximately 80% of the streetlights on city streets. All our 20% of all come since about 1990. Since that we've been acquiring those since 1990. We don't acquire them. Every new light that goes in, we we assume which we're not obligated to do. We were just told that it would be cost effective back then. I don't think it is now. But somebody needs to do an analysis. I'm not, you know, I don't know how many, how, what we're saving, but it'd be easy to figure. You got, you got 20, Mid-America operates 20, so we've got, what, 1,200, and, and see how much we save a month, and I bet you we're losing money. Yeah, we could look into it, but my guess is we are better off with Mid-American owning What's the maintaining the lights. Ray, do you know? Kurt Frank, Labor Supervisor. So, yeah, the city owns and maintains 1,861 streetlights. What, what, what do we save on those 1,800 lights by us owning them? Well, I don't think we save anything. We have to maintain them, and we still no, pay no, for I'm them. No, no, I'm talking, what, what's your rate? There's a difference in the, in the tariff that MidAmerica can charge for those lights. <coughs> they can't charge us the full rate. That's why we went into that. Do you have any idea of what that tariff is? Yeah, they, the, the rate is, is, ranges from seven twenty eight per month per light up to around $32 per month per light. On the ones we own? Yeah. But what about what do they charge us? That's, it's the same rate. No. It, it depends on whether the light is on a wooden pole or a steel pole. Right. Whether I, it's overhead I wire. Right. But I'm saying they, if we own the pole, our electricity rate is less. We don't, we were not supposed to be paying it. Why would we own lights if the, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's why they talked us into that. That's what I'm asking is take a, take a steel pole and figure out what they charge you and then what they charge you for the, for the ones they own. And then you can figure basically how much we save a year on that electricity is it worth what we're doing here is all right Mayor, well, we'll get we'll get you a council memo on right. that you know what i'm saying there is uh, a different yeah. tariff right well there's supposed to be hopefully there is there better be i do want to point out in the memo is stated uh, staff was able to perform several more extensive repairs utilizing the upgrade maintenance electrician position previously would have needed to be contracted out so the using the staff has helped a lot but there were a total of just under 400 repairs and inspections correct and I don't know how often we do the inspections or if that's just a on a case-by-case -case, if there's an issue it's, with the street light yeah it's typically complaint driven yeah complaint driven yeah from the mayor because <laughs> nobody else has a yellow out. legal pad in their car. Yeah. Are you talking about the lights? The mayor also huh? gave us the phone the numbers. The lights, the colored lights? I can complain about them. They're Every out. Time, any outage, I get... Bob you get lots get, of texts. Yeah, Bob gets lots of text messages. Well, that's, I mean, that's the way to do it, and unfortunately, because... It, I don't know. If they're out. They're out. You need to. Well, you need to they've been out it. on Hamilton Boulevard. The one east side was out. Now they can't get two fixed on the west side after four emails or text messages. But yeah, they don't have a. We'll get on it. That would pop up. The biggest problem is you have to determine whether you own it or not. Yeah, and that takes time. Or the ones we own just totally freckled throughout the city, or is there yeah, a there's block really of no, them? Yeah, there's really there? no rhyme or reason. Uh, oh. All I can say is that the luminaires on the traffic signal lights are all city owned. So, but yeah, I have maps that show what we own versus what Mid American owns. And the city, the website also has a place where you can report a street light out, and that comes directly to me. 
that I determine whether it's city owned or Mid American owned. Right. S do you have the map with you? A what? You have that map with you? I don't. No, oh. it's it's pretty thick. And the city's is is on our ARC map. It's electronic. Oh, okay. <laughs> but the Mid American map is. I thought maybe you had a list or something there with you. Eight, Eighteen hundred light. Eighteen hundred plus lights. Yeah. Well, and what you're not counting in is. We had extensive cost putting those in, which right. we would have with Mid-America because they charge. I get that. Mm -hmm. But it's not like we had a, have a huge savings by doing that. So. so was the consensus we don't want to purchase any more streetlights? Well, I don't want to make that decision until it, yeah. right. we'll, we find We will get a cost yeah, memo point. that shows the cost analysis. See what the real advantages are and disadvantages. Okay, thanks for what you do for making those repairs though on our own. Project, sorry. Project 139007, annual intersection and traffic signal improvements, CIP page 256, report page 34. This is where the report shows Gordon at $7,500 to $10,000 per intersection, but what the question I had was, the memo kind of alluded to there might be certain areas that would be good for these kind of inter in, uh, signals, traffic control systems. Mm -hmm. But but is there any way to just is there a blanket way of saying well these areas or not really? I mean, because there's going to be some areas where you're not going to want them when they're next to residential, residential, and yeah, uh, yes, countdown to and noise or just the noise. Count. I think the countdown's on them. It's both. So. I don't know why we would have, when you spent three hundred thousand dollars for an intersection, that you wouldn't add seventy five hundred bucks. It makes, but your manual on uniform traffic control devices doesn't require it. Does not require it. I don't care. It, <laughs> we can certainly put those in on our new on our new signals if that's what you. Well, and I would say, I mean, my. The point I had to bring in part of this up is I just think anytime there's going to be an increase walking or traffic as far as people utilizing those like in our downtown I think would especially be important or even where there might be developments or bikes or people walking that would be my intention because I agree to the mayor that it's well worth it if there are going to be a lot of people walking to try to be more inclusive and at least let people know of when it is a green arrow or walking one direction or another. Maybe Gordon, since it's all spread out throughout the community, you know, going forward at least, we could, we could look at doing the auditory um, signals. On a case by case basis. For the, new, for the new ones and then we can, I guess it'd be a, a monumental task to start identifying the existing ones and it would take to change those out or to add to, I don't know if you change them out or add to them or what you do with them or if when you're doing repair or if, it's, or or if the signal has to be replaced yeah. for some reason. Now see the signal we're doing right now at Floyd and outer, that one's already been bid out. It's already been awarded. Those were not included on that. So, but if you're talking a change order of $10,000, I certainly think you ought to do that. That's a big, long intersection for sure. handicapped yeah. people to navigate with yeah. some Gordon, why don't you just see what the contractor would say that Who has the bid job? about a change order? I think that's a, a good suggestion. Who got the job? It hasn't bid yet, I don't think, Gordon. It has. It's um, INA. Who? INA. INA Construction got it. They usually do concrete, but they're subbing the, that portion out because there's a lot of concrete work to do. But yeah, I mean, I, I trust your judgment on a case-by-case -case basis as far as the inclusion. I mean, I would I would err on the side of including them because we don't know where future development may happen. But yeah, I trust your judgment on that. So do you want a memo or on how much it's going to be? Or do you want to just go ahead if it's under the change order amount? I'd like to see what it is, but I'd okay. be for it. Mm -hmm. So yes, if yep. you can let us know. Memo. Yep, please. Thanks, Gordon. Thank yep. you. Project 139009, City Traffic Control System, CIP page 258, much, report page 35. How much is that project? Gordon, on, the, on this memo, uh, on the, let's see, 
It was on the, um, I don't know, it was a paragraph talking about South Lake Port and Sargent and the Singing Hills water tank. The project is not started. What's the, what's the time frame on that? On the project that's not started? Uh, am, I reading, am I reading that incorrectly? Yeah, the second portion hasn't been started yet. But that's um, budgeted in FY23? Yes. I'm, I'm, it's a Simcoe project. What is it? Yeah. Oh, on that one? Oh, you're looking at the next one, 258, then. W what's the time? Fiber? Yeah. They're studying the whole corridor. Oh, okay. What's the timing on that, then? It's a Simcoe project. Uh, they're studying the whole corridor. So... I got a question. Okay. You say that the project, the WCICC, who's not here to answer the question, doesn't think co-locating with MetroNet is feasible consideration. Guess what? Until you give me some data that says that, just because Mr. Malloy says it doesn't make sense, doesn't make sense to me. Tell me you're going to spend $300,000, you're going to have maintenance on it over the years, but you guys can't tell me what it costs per month to, to buy it, to rent lines. And if it's 25 or 30 bucks a month, do you know how many years you have to go to justify this and you, got, you don't have the maintenance anymore? I mean, we, we've gotten into this business, and again, I keep getting on we run hundreds and hundreds of pairs and use three or four. Who else does that but government? Each, so, the traffic signal has 12, 12, 12 okay, strands. You got 12. Okay. How many pairs are you running then? Okay. <laughs> How many are you running, Kurt? I, I don't know. <laughs> I just know the traffic signals use 12 strands. <laughs> okay. You're probably running 96,000, but anyway, that, that's what Piper is, right? Yeah. That's what I don't get. You. John Malloy and, and I love Glenn, uh, Glenn Sedeby, but they could never tell you why. And it's time we ask the question. $300,000 will go a long way somewhere else if you're talking $30 a month. Okay. So, I, before this project starts, somebody's got to tell me what the cost would be to rent. Metrolink is out in that neighborhood as we speak. And there's no way you can't tie into their stuff. So maybe the rest of them are okay, but I'm not. I want, I want more than John doesn't think it's a good idea. There's a lot of things there I don't think are a good idea, but we're doing them anyway. So I guess I'd just like to have more. Do we have any? Do we have any? Glenn's been still consulting. <clears throat> That's what we get. Apparently, we whether we have to or not, give me the proposal from what we've talked about. Wherever like we we'll drop lines, we at least say that we have it in front of them for somebody else to come in and install lines. I know, on. but so I feel like have a good working the left hand doesn't know what the right hand exactly. is doing yet. Yeah. What's that? With the fiber. We don't. I know. We should have never gotten into business. I know that John Malloy's group. They don't want to be in charge of it. He's, well, I don't know. I like that we have fiber, and I, I like that we own it. I'm saying we just are. It's an it's an asset that's unrealized. Mm -hmm. You know what exactly. I mean? We've talked about that for no, that, That's my how point. we could monetize, how we could utilize, how we could. We're not going to do it. Then we might be better off. I mean, we spent millions of dollars putting fiber in this mm -hmm. city fiber around town, and I can almost guarantee you, it would have been much cheaper to rent it. Rent. Piggyback, or yeah. Well, the school district runs to all their schools. They don't run to their schools. They have Fibercom run to their schools. They've at least done a cost analysis, I would suspect. But well, what are we going to do with this? Well, they, I, I would move that that no money be expended on this project until better information is given to the council. Okay. Sounds I, good. I'll I'd leave information. it in, but I'd. Further information. Is there a second to that? I Call the roll, please. Until uh, you find Aye. out the comparison with Metronet. Well, I don't. Not even saying Metronet. I don't care who it is. I, you know, oh. Ivercom or anybody. Yeah. 
We currently have a, a single response for an RFP that is to help manage our fiber system. Um, we hope to have something by mid-April on whether to proceed with that organization or not. Good. Well, maybe they can give you an answer. Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shainer? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Passes 5 0. Project 719130 Annual Rail Crossing Improvement Program and Project 719026 Rail Crossing Improvement Leeds and Riverside. CIP pages 306 and page 287. Report page 36. Any idea when we'll actually have a quiet zone in Sioux City? As soon as we get some of these projects complete? But the problem is we scatter, we go here and then we go here. I mean, shouldn't we have done like completed an area yeah I mean we you were almost had leads done and then you went to Riverside well we're still waiting on some stuff to be done in leads too no I know that but but the two or three intersections you did in Riverside you know I don't know I I don't know we spend all this money and we still you know I get to four o'clock in the morning get to hear the Chicago Northwestern blow the whistle even though I don't think they need to at that particular point because they're just running up the track but will the railroads actually believe it's a quiet zone when you get done or otherwise why are we even spending this money that is that is the intent yeah and is downtown, are we, do we have the major intersections now all downtown covered or no, not? Not quite. Yeah, but I was court, trying to think. You gotta do some stuff on Court Street. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Brittany Anderson, senior civil engineer. Um, we're actively working on projects in all three quiet zones. Downtown, we have a quiet zone on three crossings, and we still have Iowa Court and Virginia and Jackson will be the next one. Um, we did Jackson and got improvements this last construction season. And we've gone through the design on court. So as soon as the rail does their funding and their project for the signals, we'll move forward on that. And then Virginia and Iowa, we've done diagnostic reviews. So we're coordinating with them on those designs. So our intent for downtown will be to submit the notice of intent yet this year um, for the quiet zone. And then it'll go through the point system and whether or not we qualify and then we'll finish out those projects so we've done all this work but we don't necessarily know if we'll even get a quiet zone we've done our analysis on the point <laughs> system so based on our side we see that it'll qualify but it'll be up uh, to them to do the final wow. review and so, them at the railroad yes so Gordon that uh, the three options that are discussed in the memo, the first option is the one that's in FY25. Do we need to take any kind of action today on that? Are you talking the Riverside one? River, yeah, yes, the last, your last CIP budget paragraph on page 37 talks about the three options above that, one, two, and three. Basically, it's the time frame. One is two years, and one's four years, and the other is 10 plus years. Yeah, so that's for the the Riverside Quiet Zone, the Bruner Street or Bruner Avenue crossing. Um, right now, it's a public crossing and it serves those two properties. So we need direction. If what we put in for the budget would be acquisition and closing that crossing right. of those two properties, other alternatives would be to provide them access off West Nineteenth and close the crossing, or pursue signalization of the crossing through the rail. Is Bruner where the construction yard is? No, Bruner's down the old dump road? Yes. There's a storage building there. This guy's renting out. But right. Spend 400000 to... But right now we have the first option, don't we, in, in FY25? Isn't that in the Correct. CIP yeah, now? Good. So do we need to make any, I mean, is there a reason to decide that today, whether we want option two or option three, and whether that goes in FY25? 
Maybe, I might be misinterpreting your memo, but it looked like we were talking about three different options. Do we, do we need to can give those consideration today and have discussion on them? Well, you certainly can if you know what the direction you want. However, it could change in next year's budget when she submits it too. So those are two options. If things change between now and then, it's always an option to update the plan. Have you because talked to the, current the owner to see if they're willing to sell? Yeah, we met with them and we already did a... Um, appraisal on the property. <clears throat> How much was that appraisal? Um, Roughly. That was about 400. Yeah. 400? Yeah, they want quite a bit more. more. Quite. In the appraisal. Well, the estimate showing at 700,000, is that for the Open. implementing the quiet zone as well? Yeah, there's, That's there's, total, there's other things involved. Total package. Yeah, it's a total package. Okay. Yes for that purpose can you I doubt it because it's not a there's no utility or public purpose it would just be to close the crossing so they wouldn't have access then we have the right to always close the crossing, but then they have the right to sue for compensation but the compensation would be based upon an appraisal not based upon what they think necessarily Well, sounds like we'll know more this coming year then. I mean, if it's in FY25, there's really no need. We don't really need to choose between the one, two, three today. Not no. Today, no. We, we need to talk to them, the property owners, some more. Okay. Because they own the property to the north where uh, an alternative access could be made. Well, they own two pieces. Yeah, but that one is fronting West 19th, and it's not in use. It's, so it's, they took it's, it's empty. It's down? Or what? Is that where they took all those trees down? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Project 719262 11th Street, Grandview to Douglas, CIP page 318, report page 38. Conclusion is we own the 80 foot wide parcel. The city does. It's, and it is a parcel at this point, it hasn't reverted back to right of way or we haven't converted it back to right away. Okay. Project 549196 Pulaski Park Drainage Project, CIP page 390, report page number 39. I read this memo and I'm completely confused. You're going to take a south ball field and make a lake basically? No? No. Uh, uh, he's gonna try to work upstream. Well, yeah, yeah, yep. I know, but minimize what comes down stream. Yep. And we don't know if it's feasible yet. So this is what we hope to use that um, SRF sponsored money for the 1.9 million that well, that's like you'll you did at the mall try to do some modifications that slow the flow. Yep. Yep. With small bioswells and little rock dams and stuff like that. But we're, we're working with impact 7G right now to see if this is feasible. Okay. If not, then we'll provide another alt opportunity to use this somewhere else in the watershed and then bring that to you guys. Project 519264, Poorbacks, CAP page number 432, report number four, page 41. 21 openings. That's probably way more than that right now. Brad Pitts, utilities director, the main banks have been pretty persistent. So there's probably a few more than that out there now. The, the memo's changed a little bit since we talked, or since I wrote this actually. Uh, we did bid the poorbacks. Uh, two contractors were low. You'll be seeing that coming to council for approval on the 27th. Okay. Thank you. Next, we have the technical changes for CIP. Do you want to run through all of them? I'll be done in one motion, can it? The technical changes? At the end. Motion will be at the end, unless you want to pull something for a separate vote. I'll just read through them. So we'll continue with these all the way through technical changes, or we're going to approve up to 22? Um, 
We've already well, looked up through 22. We've already approved. It would go through the CA Starting with technical 20, changes on yeah. B4, number 33. Okay. 23 through 33. The CIP. Be like our consent agenda. Pull it for a second. Well, I'll read through them and we'll approve it way at the all the way at the end with the other technical changes. Oh, even the operating technical. Yep. But Unless we you want, pull it out. But as we go through those now, we can pull one out. If, if you want. Oh, yep. CAP technical changes. Project 663162 South Bridge Rail. Adjusting funding to 50% IDOT rail grant and 50% transfer in Dono TIF in FY24 and 25. Number 24, Project 663384, Seeing Hills Development, moving funds from FY24 to FY25 to unprogrammed. Project 459302, City Trails, revising the work plan, changing geo bonding to 100,000 in FY24 and 765,000 in FY25. Project 459317, Big Sioux Crossing, revising the work plan, changing geo bonding from 1.194 million to 02 South Lewis Boulevard reconstruction, moving funds from FY25 and FY26 to unprogrammed. Excuse me, just for a minute. Mm -hmm. Matt, on these trail technical changes, you're, you're in agreement with those, correct? I mean, staff would speak up on these two. No, I'm the one that recommended them based on timing of the projects. Yes. We can easily move it around to accommodate the splash pad. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Matt. Project, um, did I say, yeah, I did. Um, project 759114, annual sidewalk ramp program. Move three Grandview Boulevard crossings from FY25 to FY24, increasing the FY24 geo bonds to $452,000. Where is that? Where is where are those three? And I think Gordon. those were the R, the the, the red. red ones that were suggested in the um, oh yeah, yeah. DIP budget to okay. move them forward. Okay. Project five three nine zero zero six, wastewater treatment plant facility plan improvements, revising the work plan, adding SRF funding in FY twenty four through FY twenty six, adjusting the SRL funding in FY twenty seven, and changing the unprogrammed amounts. Project 539117, Wastewater Treatment Plant Annual Renewal Modifications. Revising the work plan, removing sewer abated geo bonds in FY24, <coughs> SRL funding in FY25 and FY26, the unprogrammed funding, and adjusting the transfer in sewers, sewer fund to 250000 in FY24 and 465000 in FY25. Project 539207, lift station improvements, revising the work plan, removing SRF funding in FY24 through FY27, and changing the SRL funding to transfer in sewer funds in FY28. Project 519268, outer drive pressure and storage, moving funding, moving funds from FY24 to FY25. How much was that? Yeah. That's fine. Go ahead. That's fine. It's quite a bit. Mm. I can look at Fourteen million, is it? No, I think it was part of it was planned. Went from sixteen to fourteen. Um, we have eleven million seven thirty-eight. That's water funds anyway, right? Yep, it'll be um, SRL funding. Okay. Okay. Operating discussion and reports number thirty-four. City manager well, discussion. Minute, do you want us to move those technical changes? No, we're going to do them at the end with all the operating technical changes, okay. unless you pull them out. Okay. Number 34, under the city manager discussion regarding recruitment incentive improvement request, page 116 in the operating book. <clears throat> Mayor and Council, I'd recommend that we pull this and delete it. Uh, I'm committed to working with human resources. We'll come up with alternatives that help with recruitment and retention of Move deletion. Is there a reason or discussion? I mean, do you have thoughts? Is it just because there's it's I a was, tight budget here, and I was lukewarm on this to begin with. Uh, discussion at the budget hearing, uh, council was lukewarm. So uh, we've already had some preliminary discussions on things, other things we could do to increase our recruiting range and pool of employees, and I think it's appropriate to try those things instead. Uh, possibly changing residency requirement distances and things like that. 
And I would just try to track that, Bob. I mean, see what you can do and see what movement is made. Because, I mean, I agree. I think we need to be intentional and give, you know, if we need to fund, throw money behind that to look at our recruiting effort to make sure that we're getting the right people in the right positions. I mean, I'm... I understand this is a tough year, and I'm not saying that future years will be easier, but I, I believe in that we need to make sure that we're we, the, other thing is, on the amount too. that we asked we didn't feel would, would even make a dent in. Yeah, that's what I wondered, too. I get that, too. I made the motion to delete. Second. O'Kane. Aye. Shainer. <clears throat> Aye. Scott. Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. Passes 5 0. I, got, I want to go back because this is going to come up. It's in your budget, I understand. We're not putting the fence around Grandview Park this year, or we are? We are not. At least at, least at this point, no one has requested that the city fund that. Um, if they would, uh, I'm not supportive of that. Just want to make sure so that. I, th I personally don't understand how. Uh, what do we give besides that to Saturday in the park? Uh, we give a we, we're an annual sponsorship. I think is eight thousand dollars. I guess my my deal is that something that brings that many people to town. I'm not sure it's a bad investment. I understand that not everybody we, agrees with that, but we did the fencing. I know specifically I know. because of the I water know. tank that's now issue. that will now be complete um, I don't know what the intent of Saturday in the park is they could approach us again but at this point our direction is that we're not paying defense around the whole well park. I would suggest that if they do that you bring that to the council to that, approve bring so it back to the council not in the middle of that yes okay well because I agree I think that we that is a huge event for our community and looking at our sponsorship or what is necessary we want to be an active partner in that but i also think this year is in the situation that we're going to be pulled in a couple different directions because of rag bry and wanting to fund different aspects of that as well so so that makes it kind of a unique year in that but but i agree with the mayor that if something is requested come forward thanks Number 35, events facilities. Memo regarding Kinseth current year expenses and contract expiration date. Report page 44, operating page 152, excuse me, 153. So as requested, the mayor would like, um, requested to know what the current FY23 expenses were to date. Um, and we provided that in the memo. They're sitting um, at about 238,000 so far for the year, which seems like they'll be on projection for what their current budget amount is. And then for the FY23, um, well, yeah, because their FY23 budget is 340000 so they'll probably hit that number. And then also provided in the memo, um, the mayor had asked about the contract terms and the agreement, how to end the agreement if council decided they wanted to, and we provided that in the memo. I don't, I don't, I certainly do not want that to go on automatic pilot. I want to vote. I think we we need to. I don't like these automatic pilots as witness mm -hmm. garbage contract. Uh, I think that should come up for a vote. And Kinseth will be close to the end of their fiscal year, and we'll have a better idea of where they're at. But uh, you know, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to apologize for feeling that they've not they've not performed anywhere near to the level of what we were told they would, and they've had ample opportunity to to do better so so I I would move that that not go on automatic pilot that it come back to this council uh, uh, sometime in May well currently the agreement doesn't expire until 2032 and then it goes on so to the automatic I, renewal I thought you said I thought I read that it would come up so it already automatically renewed? No, the no, term of the agreement was 15 years. The because original Because of terms. the built of, or because of the hotel. I, I'm, I would assume that was yeah. part of it. Because it was basically wow. they're making that investment, so then they wanted that to come But we out. can term out. I was going to yes, say, then I didn't know there, there was that termination. termination. Early termination. Yeah, the termination opportunity. Yes. 
I, I think if you're looking at that provision, the termination provision, that that should probably be set on a council agenda item for discussion and deliberation. Yes, if council wanted to move forward with that, yes, we would have to do that. I don't know. I, I'm going to, I know I'm going to lose, but I don't care. It's ridiculous. The property taxes are continuing to go up on this deal. And I'm, I'm going to move that it be reduced. It, it, it should be going down and it continue to go up. And every year we say, we hear it's going to get better. Well, it's not getting better. You can't, you can't justify that this is a good deal anymore. Good morning, City Council. Morning. Um, actually, we are doing better than year over year, if you look at it. Um, name, that's name. part in the contract itself. Name and address for the record. Oh, please. I'm so sorry. Um, Newton Cam with the uh, city, uh, with the convention center. So um, I understand that, you know, may your concern. Um, however, based on <clears throat> what the calculation is based on the contract itself, so we are performing better that's the reason why, <clears throat> sorry, um, we are performing better. That's the reason why there is a um, calculation based on what the contract is. And it's something that, you know, we have went through diligently just to make sure that we are continue performing at the level where we should have promised um, to the city and, and um, to the city council as well. So you're performing better, but your subsidy goes up. Because of their, like the incentive and the built in the agreement. It's which you, you get better, than. which you and I talked about. <laughs> if you get better, you ought to have less subsidy. I, otherwise, you got a very bad contract. Which it is, yeah. council could try, choose to terminate the agreement and renegotiate. Renegotiate. There's absolutely nobody in the right mind would sign a contract like that. I don't know. Well, we did. We would, yeah. I feel really good about voting no on the contract now. I feel better than I've ever felt. <laughs> so this is on you, Moore. You were around here. <laughs> yes, I was. Well, I don't know. I guess the rest of you are fine. I, I... Is there a way to bring it back for discussion and analysis? I mean, do we want to do that in May? I think it's important to revisit and just have a conversation of what's been done, what the contract looks like. Now that we understand a track record and have revisited that, do you have a timeline of mind, Mayor? Do you want to do this year or one more year? Because how many years has it been, Jess? Um, well, it started in 2017, so I think they're on year six. Year yeah. six. Year, this is year six. However, we also have accounted for the pandemic as well that really Correct. have a high impact on the, not just about us, but the entire nation. So I want, I want to sure. see council take that in consideration The pandemic as well. was in our favor. We only subsidized you 160,000. I'm hoping for another pandemic in your Well, case. Mayor, I understand unless we don't perform, then the subsidy is going to be less. However, we are performing and based on the current contract, is based on a profit sharing component. So, and so I, I just want to point it out, it's not because we're not performing, it's because on the other opposite, we are performing. Correct. And that's the reason so why. We into it. Yeah, exactly, no, I so I want to make that very clear that it's not something that we're not doing. Correct. So, yeah, and, and I think we've had an annual review. It's not like we've gone six years without correct. looking at correct. it. And we've, and we've looked at it, but maybe what we're asking for now is let's, let's take it deeper look and, and, and get it on an agenda and, and do it the, the right way as far as a review. I agree, Dan. So how, what, is, what do they get all in? How much? Um, according to the current terms, they get a base monthly fee of $3,500 a month for management. They get 1500 a month for accounting fees. And then each month, they get 5% of gross revenue if it is above those monthly fees. If so they, not, they get that so base. And that's what I was afraid of. It's based on gross revenue, not gross profit. So they could give steak dinners away, mm -hmm. and that would be to their advantage. And then they also get a 75% profit share now that we're in year six. Is it really gross revenue? Yeah, well, that's based off the profit. Who in the world would sign a contract like that? Well, we worked with staff at, at length, and what? you were a part of that, too. I mean, we all were. Correct. Well, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I mean, contracts are entered into. Parties with good faith will deal with Agreed. each other. 
agree. With good faith. So I, I don't want to jump to conclusions. No, I don't either because I wasn't in on that. But performance based on gross revenue is is not a good measure of anyone's performance because they could be booking a million dollars in business and bring in a million dollars, but their expenses could be 999000 And we're paying them based on the gross, not on the net profit. So I... I'd like I, a breakdown of what the 5% is and what the 75% is. That'll tell you if the profit percentage is, is what it should be. We have be. to look at the facts, yeah. We can provide that for you. Back there, I mean, we have it. I think either way we should bring it back for a wider discussion. Sure. I want to bring that back. That was a good point made, though, Newton. Why that? Well, June was contract renewal, so May would seem appropriate. Well, June of twenty of 32. This, no, yep, yeah, so May. Okay. You're not. You're not going to go back that far, right? No. No, no, no. And, and it's not something that's going to we, happen that, that's going to change. It just, okay. We could bring it back as a presentation. In the, yeah, they just want, okay. I, think, I think people want to. As a regular couple. How that contract really is numbers wise so. and, and i think jessica's done a good job of analyzing and digging into and looking through her and i've had other conversations as well that i think now things have come to light and understood kind of where people are and what we're able to do we'll add it in front of us every year i think it's important to note that the contract is actually paid on a calendar year so we're trying to budget on a fiscal year, oh. but the contract is paid on a calendar year. So you can look at now you've got yep. the December. But so we have the number, December. So, give us so we can give you 22s, but it won't be, it won't coincide with the That's fiscal fine. year. That's just fine. so you guys are know. Okay. I just want to make sure you guys are aware. Okay. Once again, I'm the only union guy in the place, I think. So I move that we Thank take you. five minutes. Thank break. you. Thanks, Newton. <laughs> Well, Matthew could be in the union. Are you in the union, Matthew? Of course I'm in the union. Paying dues? A long I'm line of... I'm paying, paying dues. You're right. not in the union. I am paying dues, dues of course. <laughs> Sarah, do we have any more coffee? But uh, is it empty? I uh, think so. I can ask if possible. I think I got tapped. <laughs> you're going to vote for the officers now? <laughs> Hi, how are you? I've got a question related to tiny homes. I'm wondering how is the current designer able to move forward with their project? Does it have to do with the zoning? Um, what Jill said earlier, it's because if they're being treated as accessory structures, there's a main building there, uh -huh. and they're being treated as accessory structures. Okay. But it makes sense. I was thinking about that yeah. more. More detailed. And it's almost like if you have a community center or like... Oh, a, I love that. Then you have different... Because then you have the tiny homes, but say you want like a recreation mm -hmm. hall or you want Counseling. like an area or something, oh, some type of service, almost yeah. like a... Thank you. Yes, please. Almost like a... Um, right. I, that's way more desirable to me. Almost like a, a center where you could entertain people because we're not going to entertain people in your tiny home. Right. So it's like if you have a little space. Mm -hmm. But if that's the way that it works is as long as you have that, right. a supplemental service, right. and then those are auxiliary buildings. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. If there was something like that. I said, somebody has to be on site because he's talking about building. And something. then you have, and then what you have is like with Grinson Center, you have, exactly, you have a support staff that's almost like a, a front desk worker that can at least direct people, they're pecking it, they have, have questions. Have meltdown or, or something's happening, they can call. Mm -hmm. Well, and whether it's that or just, yeah. Right. It I mean, depends yeah. on what the, yeah, what the purpose is. Mm -hmm. Because another perfect example would be like Hope Street, you know, like they're doing Schessler Hall, but say that they had a different property that had a large presence, but then also smaller auxiliary ones, then they could check in. I wonder if Chris Dam stayed on with Hope Street or... Oh, I don't know. But I was talking to Casey about that. And I was like, gosh, that's really great, you know, that Hope Street's going to be able to expand and all that. And she said, yeah, but it's also horrible because the people that were in Schessler Hall now have nowhere to go. They finally had stability in their life where maybe they had lived there for years and done different things, and now they're out. Right. Chris told me that some of the women that were living there, that she literally almost left them from like a dumpster. But that's where they were living. Yeah. 
they just uh, didn't have enough revenue to keep going. That kind of was like, um, I mean, Chris actually whipped it into shape. It was really going downhill when she took over. Next item up is number 36, Human Resources. Discussion of the salary study improvement request, CIP page 200. Huh? I'm going to pull it for a vote, absolutely. I'm going to pull it. I've been through one of those. It's like paving hearings. You don't want any part of them, but you guys will do what the manager wants. I'm sure I'd move that we drop that payroll study. Second. My question for it is, is this comprehensive, Janelle or Bob, that it looks at kind of all positions and where we're at to remain competitive? Is that kind of the hope? Yes. And how much is that? So you go that? outside of that for the salary study? So you go and look at other communities? As an example. In Iowa or do you go to I just became aware of the city of Sioux Falls just simply completed one. Um, and uh, they looked at Des Moines, Sioux City, Omaha, uh, other comparable uh, government entities and determined whether they were still competitive within the marketplace. But in their case, they found. Sectors. What's that? 
but never the private sector. But not the private sector. In their case, they found out the majority of their jobs were still competitive, but they found a handful of jobs that needed to be looked at further. <clears throat> Uh, we're estimating the 100,000. Yeah. I wish we could address the mayor's concern about, not his concern, his point about why we shouldn't do it, because we could have some negative consequences that could come out of it. How do we address that? Is that what you're saying, basically? Here's what happens. Some, some employees will be overpaid. It's inevitable. But we never redline anybody around here because we couldn't do that. And I don't say we should, don't get me wrong, but that's the biggest problem. So you're going to have pay increases and you're, you're, not going to, you're never going to decrease anyone's pay around here. So if you're doing a true study of wages, that should happen, but it won't. And I don't think it should necessarily, I mean, it should happen, but on the other side of the coin, how do you ask a person to take a pay cut? That's difficult. Well, when's the last time one was done? Uh, 2003 for non-bargaining, and I'm not sure when the last one was done for bargaining units. Well, I would be curious to see, I mean, if that is the case, Mayor, or, I, and I have no idea. I would just be very curious if you're talking like three or five positions or anywhere where you are in that scale. I mean, I think it's a good ex exercise. It's been 20 years then, at least analyze, okay, well, how many people would you need to bump up, you know, or are grossly underpaid if, if that's their argument or contention? And then on the other side, if the mayor's point is correct, you know, how many people are we overpaying and what can we do to address some of that? Whether it's through then, once you have retirements, how do we go through the restructuring or what do we do? And I spoke, I mean, a lot has changed in 20 years. I suppose we need to analyze that. So I think it's a worthwhile exercise, but then we just need to be proactive about addressing the mayor's concerns and in retaining good help. I mean, that's kind of probably another part of what we just said that we're not going to fund is, you know, a retention program. But I think this, you're, you're going to have ongoing costs. If you have to increase people's pay and remain competitive, I get that. But you want to keep good people too. And right now, we mentioned this at the onset of the budget hearing. We looked out at all of our staff members and expect them to do more with less. And make sure that we're competitive and that we retain the best. I don't disagree with you on that, but I have the confidence in our now city manager. I'm not going to go back to history, but I have confidence in our city manager now that, that Bob has a good handle on that. It's reviewed annually. It's not like we waited 20 years and we're trying to figure out what's going on today. I think we have a good handle on whether we're treating our staff empl and employees right or not. I mean, it's, you, you've got to have some knowledge in that as you're setting these, these uh, pay scales that you're doing, and we, and we go by that and, and give increases where increases are justified. Um, I, I guess the mayor has me convinced that you know, this, could, this could cause more problems than it solves and we must be doing a pretty good job because I think we have a good staff. I, I'm not saying, oh gosh, maybe we can improve here, improve there. But I think our city manager has a good handle on that already. You know what's going on. And if you think it needs to be corrected, well, we had that just last month, didn't we? Or two months ago, we had to, we had to make some corrective action to get employees City yeah, employees, in case, wastewater treatment. To where, yeah, to where they should be. I do think at this point this is warranted because at the end of the day we kind of live in a bubble. Um, I think we treat our employees very well, but as far as a recruitment, I think it would be nice to know if, if we're within the range of, of other communities as we try to recruit things like planners and police officers and other things. Let me ask you this, where else would we use this $100,000 if we didn't do the study where it's needed? We're talking about increasing police officers. Yeah, we could use it. We're talking about having weekly pickups for recycle. We're talking, we're talking about all kinds of things. Yeah, you could, it could be used other, elsewhere. I mean, for me, the timing, I appreciate what you're recommending, Bob, but the 
but the timing for me just seems it's just it doesn't seem to be right to be spending a hundred thousand unless you think we're running a risk of losing a full department or losing employees but that's across the state across the country of finding good good workers just to be transparent with you and just candid about it Ma maybe another maybe the other day I was going to say, I'd be curious of Janelle's thoughts. And Dan, I completely agree. I think, and I've, I've harped on this, that it's a tough budget year and we're going to have to make decisions. And, and look, I don't want to spend 100 k just to see where we are with pay scales and everything like that necessarily either. But I think that my understanding of, of watching us operate so far is that our staffs, our staff are trying to be firefighters so to speak and you know we just had the director of the library come to us and say wow we got to put out this fire because we are not filling these positions and they're not what we need so now they're trying to address it tom was trying to address the inequities and he's like we got to put this fire out and figure out how to keep people we'll do this whereas this is more comprehensive saying let's let everyone have an equal playing field so they don't have to scream <laughs> to try to do this and I don't want to spend 100k on this either. I'd rather hire a police officer. No offense, Janelle or Bob. <laughs> I would probably rather do that as well. But in 20 years, when is the timing going to be right? Oh, it will be. It will be. I just think this this year is just too tough to be doing this. I so I would. I want to make it clear. Not at this time. I'm not saying not ever. But you would want to do it later. You know, Bertrand, Human Resources Director. I think the city manager and I brought this because we had noticed several department heads coming to us indicating that they wish to increase uh, several of their job classes, the pay in them, because they are not, they didn't feel they were competitive. So I believe the city manager and I thought that if we just took a look at the whole organization, then that would take care of some of these individual requests that come piecemeal. I think we need to look externally at other communities. I think we need to look also at our internal um, the jobs that we hold internally to ensure consistency across departments and pay grades. And like uh, Bob had said, this has been a long time since we've done this. I agree with your comments about looking at how do we handle the results because not everybody's gonna go up, not everybody's going to come down. So I believe before that even gets, uh, I guess, rolled out, we need to figure out what exactly are we going to do based on the results that come in. That's what I would like to stress is what's our action plan on the what ifs. Mm -hmm. So what, what will we do if, and I'm not saying we have it, but if we, it comes back and we're like, well, these six people are quite a bit more than we're, you know, director recommended of they human be. human resources, grossly <laughs> right, overpaid. But, right. So what then do do? I'm not a big fan of redlining people either, but right. that would need to be done. We see a lot of our technical jobs um, that we don't compete competitively, especially in the private sector. A lot of the inspectors, what Daryl sees, uh, some of the engineering positions, uh, we are struggling with matching pay. Uh, so I think it's now's a good time to look at those things. Right, but that brings me back to the people who are Correct. maybe above that. What What's Correct. our contingency plan for that? I don't think we've gotten that far. We thought we'd... That's the most important part, part of mm -hmm. the It's really I've difficult... Been... And when you say you're overpaid, you lose that employee's it's an, incentive. Thank you, right. Very difficult. It's a concern that we'll have to evaluate should this be approved. Well, that is as well as not knowing the consequence of getting uh, employees that are not paid fairly, getting those employees in line. We don't know how much we're talking about. We could very well put ourselves in a corner where if you've done a study on when your department heads are talking to you about this, can we not look at and say, well, is it competitive in the marketplace? What are the other, what are other cities paying? What are other private companies paying? And kind of just take it upon ourselves to say, are we way off or are we in line? We do that currently when they come to us. Well, that's, that's what I thought. So, but, I mean, I mean, but we it, do it so piecemeal that correct. it's just, it's like whack-a-mole. Well, yeah. well, but it we're trying to look at. We're just trying to look at it from an organizational way. Right. It's been 30 years just to know where we're at in the marketplace. Right now, we don't know where we're even at in the marketplace. But what Julie's saying, and I agree, we have to have a plan. And what I feel as a, as a council member 
is that you're going to have the you're going to first of all you're going to spend hundred thousand dollars when I don't think this is the year to be doing that. But secondly, you're going to come up with a plan, and you're going to give it to us. It'll come back to us and the mayor to decide: Are we going to give the pay raises that are needed, and how much is that going to be? And we don't know. It's kind of like if we're going to act on, if we're going to pay a hundred thousand dollars to somebody to tell us we're wrong and they're right. And we now need to take corrective action. We don't even know how much that is and how much that's going to impact the budget, which is already strained. I mean, it just puts us in a, and I'm not saying I'm trying to avoid it. I'm just saying this is not the year to be doing that. We're, we're arguing over whether we do recycling every week or every other week, you know, for a, for a, a small, great smaller amount per year than, than what it's going to cost the taxpayers to actually act on a plan that's given to us. It's not going to sit on the shelf. Councilmember Moore, we understand that. And if the timing isn't right, we understand that we'll continue to do how we do. We just as Janelle had said, we were starting to see more and more come forward. So we thought now is the time to at least put it out there for council consideration. If we but do, if the timing's not right, it's not right. And if we do the study, it doesn't mean that we have to take action on every <clears throat> item that's discovered. That's correct. Oh, well, if I but the problem if I'm an employee if I'm right, an employee I know, here and I, I know, know you're, and you're doing a study right. because I've complained I'm underpaid, mm -hmm. I expect the city council to take action Absolutely. to get me in line with where that plan is. But because I think I'm underpaid doesn't mean I am. No, but when they come back and say your the pay plan go up twelve percent, we say, well, you know, we're going to have to work into this. We can only do six percent. I'm telling you, it. These are as bad for personnel morale as they are good because it's difficult to say to somebody you're going to be redlined for five years until the world you catch up with the world or the world catches up with you that's it, it, I don't know I don't care you guys can do you remember what the results were 20 years ago after you did the study do we make a lot of were there a lot of expenses associated with it was only it was only applied to non-represented uh, various positions were redlined um, I, do, I can't recall the number of employees that maybe moved up in classification uh, just about from top to bottom all all uh, all pay ranges were adjusted um, and people were moved in and out of pay ranges um, but there were people that were redlined uh, how long up to three or four years. It depends on where they fell in the whatever the new range was, uh, as it was defined. But they would continue to get a cost of living raise. Nope, not until, oh, not until the their pay hit. Not until the top of the range uh, exceeded what their current salary was. Yes. Do you recall, Bob, what the average percent of increase was at the? No. No. Janelle, I'm I know in a lot. I know in a lot of cases the compensation was they fell within the range, the band of the compensation, so there was no change. Um, it more impacted the people at the bottom end that didn't fall within the band, and the top end that were above the top of the range. If you fell within the range, you you, you yeah. It wasn't looked at on an individual by individual basis. But they also include they also historically increase the top end of the range. Just in this case, they didn't. Well, that's unique then, because that's not. You did, did you do one of these for the state? We did. Statewide. Statewide. How'd that work? Very similar to what this place experienced. Well, don't get me wrong. I'm. I'm. I, I want to pay fairly, but. And it seems like we've made adjustments. You, you call it putting fires out, but we've made adjustments as needed on a, a, as it comes along. I mean, but if you're getting a volume of complaints, is what I'm hearing. We're having a volume of complaints from the employees. You know, those can, can't those be addressed on a department by department basis without having to say we got to go have a study done. Hundred thousand dollars spent comes back. I, I see no other way to then other than to put the plan into to implement the plan some of the requests are not just individual based they're department wide where we've had a director come and want to raise multiple job classes in their department so it we i mean now let me ask you to, let me ask you is it is it a two-part 
test kind of where if we if we increase the number of employees in a department that would that would help the situation in other words do, do, do people feel like they're doing a job for two well i think that's i don't that, think that's a fair compensation should be based on the level of responsibility of work the work the work type not the workload not the work volume correct You know, the only last part that I would mention in this is just for clarification, because I'm so far from an HR expert. But um, my question would be as far as the um, redlining of employees. Gosh, I'm, I'm hardly even familiar with what that means, but I, I think I can grasp it now. Um, but aren't we essentially saying if you were to redline, say you're not increasing, you're, we're not increasing cost of living, we're not increasing your pay, whatever, until X happens, until you reach this or, you know, that happens, aren't we essentially saying to them that, look, if you're unhappy because you're being redlined and we're not able to increase your pay for however many years until you fall more in line, if they were to come <laughs> to you and say, well, then, then I'm upset and I'm going to leave we would say, well, then okay, if you can find a different position that's going to pay you more, but we're finding that based off of our immediate area, you're already right. paid higher than what you are. So if you think you can find a higher paying position, then by all means, you should pursue that opportunity because we're already at the, at the peak of that. That's the gist of the conversation, but- You know what I mean? Right, I mean- No, we would, yes. It would have Because we had a study up. done and the it's, easy to, it's easy to say for to a person that's got 15 years in the right. system, it's easy to say that, but when you've got 15 years in the system, the pay isn't just one integral part of what you look at because we're I'm so close to Ipers now, I have to put up with this whether right. I like it or not. Mm -hmm. And so my solution will be I'll become very unproductive to the to the level that I think I'm getting paid for. That's the problem. Oh, I yeah. Think it's terribly difficult. It is a difficult situation because then on the other hand you have other employees that aren't being paid the value of what their work is and they're equally as frustrated when they look across the hallway and see someone that's overcompensated. You know, there's no easy answer. But mayor to that point because I totally see I see where you're going now with that too. I would look to the director assuming that it's not the director that's in that position. <laughs> I would look to the director and say, if you're not holding that person accountable to be productive, then you have to let them go. Well, then let's vote for it. I'm, you've convinced me. Let's do it. Let's get her done. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the big train wreck, but I've been in train wrecks before around here, so why would this be Well, no, I didn't. Well... Mayor and Council, just to add, before this would ever start, would have to come back to Council, and at that point we would have the work plan, whoever we chose as the consultant would have the work plan and the steps that would be required, so you'd have a better idea of exactly what this is going to accomplish. As I mentioned, the case of Sioux Falls, their, their summary report was all but about seven or eight positions fell within reasonable compensation, so you might want to look at these positions, and that was... That was as far as it went. I shared that with you? It was in the paper. I read it in the paper. What's interesting about that, then, then there's, a, there's another issue that needs to be dealt with, obviously. If we have an expert come in after $100,000 and they say, most everybody's in line except for these three, these three or seven employees, it, it doesn't answer the question we have at hand, in my opinion. Who's going to say, well, that's an expert from down the road why why can they tell us that what we're getting paid is fair and reasonable i know what i do here i know how this system works i've been i've been in city hall for 20 years do hats do this individually put together i mean that's going to work against you too it, if i if i were in that position bob that's the argument i make with you i'd say well they don't know what they're talking about i know what i'm doing here i can talk to my director and i can convince him or her that i i deserve more pay that's just, I don't know. I'm with Alex, so I'm not an HR person at all. Yeah. You're just trying to anticipate difficulties of what this would. Well, and the city manager makes a good point that whatever, whoever does it, the consultant, they're going to put a plan, work plan together for us. 
but and is the argument i mean i know i was talking about we ask people to be firefighters in the sense that just as a problem arises then they address it julie was kind of just mentioning just you know, is this something we can ask our directors to analyze internally and it's say their own no, department? Look at your department across we, the. We certainly can do that, but this is an outside third-party neutral. Um, Correct. And it takes I, the I can come and, and tell you that everyone in city manager's office is grossly underpaid and skew the data to show that. They're trained in this area. That's not to say that my staff isn't trained, but I mean, they have the resources available to look at multiple employers. This would be a huge undertaking for my department to look yeah. at some of the jobs. I mean, you saw Monday's agenda, how many job descriptions and pay changes came here. Um, it's very, very time consuming amongst all the other work that my staff has to do. And that's what I kind of oh. worry, yeah. All for the question. All for the vote. Oh, been so long. The made it. No, the mayor made the motion. I, no, I second oh, your motion to, <laughs> to, to we're delete the hunt. bullet or not the bullet. The vote is to delete. Yes would be to delete it. No would be to keep it in the budget. Shaner? No. Scott? Aye. Waters? Didn't convince me as much. No. Moore? Aye. Kane? No. Okay. Passes three two. The next item is number number 37, discussion of the safety management software system improvement request. Of which one? Sorry, where? Which one? Um, number 37, discussion of the safety soft, uh, management software request. Gotcha. Thank you. Ross Weatherford, safety manager. So over the last three fiscal years, um, 20, 21, and 22, the average direct cost of injuries within the, for city employees was $1.4 million. If you include the indirect costs, which are one to two times the cost of the direct costs, um, we spent anywhere between $2.9 million and $4.3 million on injuries. In Calendar year 22, we had a, whole, a total of 182 injuries. So 19% uh, of the employees of the city got injured in, in uh, 2022. Uh, 62 of those I had to report to OSHA. Um, so 34% of our injuries were reported to OSHA. Um, and our cost for injuries, our direct cost for injuries in uh, 2022 was almost 1.5 million. So Those the more injuries we claims? have, our insurance premiums go up. Those are if, for comp claims? <clears throat> yes. Um, so a safety software system, uh, studies show that they can reduce injuries by 15 to 35 percent. Uh, if I can reduce the injuries by that, by that much, I estimate that I could save the city um, almost a half a mil between half a million and a million dollars. Not quite that simple because you, that doesn't necessarily mean your work comp premium. That's how you tell what you're going to save. What's our work comp premium today with the Iowa League? So our total. So um, what we spent in our work comp claims in our claims. You're not paying them. The IMCA is playing. The, the, the premium yeah. for uh, FY23 is $510,000. Right. Now, granted, that's probably going to go up if you're having a million foreign claims, but you're not going to reduce that premium. It's going to go up. I'm not opposed to your software, but you guys stand there and make statements that just aren't true. That the, the, what you pay and what the work comp company pays in claims has no relationship to our costs. That's my point. You're paying five hundred thousand. You're not going to reduce that because you got your mods going up again. Right. So you may stop that mod from going up, which would be admirable and probably worth the eighty thousand. But keep that in mind. You're not going to see a half a million dollar decrease in this budget because of that. And that mod takes years to go back down. Goes up fast, comes down, just like right. 
just like your credit takes report. Takes you four steps down. Slow and comes down really, fast. really, exactly. really bad, slow. So we, even if we did have very good size reduction in the work comp claims, it's going to have to be for several consecutive years before that premium drops. So again, I'm not against the software right. either, but I'm just saying we're just helping. But the, the indirect cost is all in the city. And the indirect costs are yeah, more than the direct costs. We, we understand yep. all that, yep. but I don't want this council to think they're going to see a half a million dollar increase, decrease in the budget. That's, that's what I'm trying to point right. out. You, you've right. got two sets of circumstances that aren't related. To, anyway. We're just, he's one person to 900. Yep. So we're no, trying. I get it. Yeah. Okay. We, we understand that. I understand. I just, when somebody says we're going to see a half a million dollar decrease, that's not. I mean, I'm sure she would love to cut his budget, but that's not, I, I just want the council to be aware of what that actually means. That's all. So we'll see fewer lost days at work and things like that. It, there will be a cost reduction. Um, no, that, that would, you're, we may not see that. It huh. may be less than that, but we will see a cost reduction. Um, and just based on the numbers, that's what I calculated. So. I don't know exactly what the cost savings will be, but with the software, I can reduce injuries and I can reduce the cost. I reduce the number of lost days um, and reduce the number of days that people are in restricted duty. Talk to us about the software just a little bit. The software, um, it would be an all, all in one system or what I would be looking for is all, all in one system to automate, simplify, and improve safety through metrics and automated analytics. We can't, I can't improve anything that I can't measure. And right now, everything that I measure in safety is on paper and through manual processes. The systems that I'm looking at or the, a system uh, would, any data you input in the system would give me automatic analytics. So it would, um, include safety in incident management, so for injuries, um, inspection management process, so I could go out to the facilities, I could do an OSHA type inspection on my phone, and when I'm done, I hit submit, and it goes to the director, it goes to the supervisors, and then that would automatically create a corrective action report that would need to be updated by the supervisors and the directors automatically uh, every 30 days until it's completed. That's um, what I was wanting to know, yeah. is what, what is this software going and to And then by uh, eliminating those hazards or correcting those violations, we can reduce injuries that way. Um, there would be a training management system that's included that allows for automatic uh, renewal of annual training. It does automatic analytics and, and it will send, <laughs> I can set it to send reports to the directors every month. The training uh, piece is important because it also includes HR topics, which you will soon be getting an email from my staff for the sexual harassment training that you have to take online. Um, it is the only online platform that we have right now. Um, this is far greater than the one we currently use. Um, so that is definitely something that we are interested in is the training module piece of the software. I was wondering if there was going to be some oh. training involved. Yes. yes. That's great. And it will schedule and send automatic reminders right now. Um, we've just looked at our current system and we have to detach and attach every single employee to the training system, which is an incredibly manual process when you've got 900. You know, we have it. At, so. We subscribe to a service and we have to do a monthly savings monthly safety meeting in order to keep as part of our work comp. It's a good program. I don't have any problem with yeah. it. Mm -hmm. the, the, the current training system I have, I can't edit any of the training. It's all uh, pre-made stuff that it is what it is. With the systems that I've looked at, we can edit the training and make it Sioux City specific. I can make multiples of the same training and make it one for wastewater and one for uh, underground utilities. So that would that would greatly improve the training that the employees are getting. Um, safety, safety data sheets, uh, the management of those, right now it's all on paper. What we could do with the system is they could go into an electronic library, um, we could scan a QR code, and the SDS will automatically pop up. Um, 
So the supervisors would have access as well. And then any time a manufacturer updates, so right now um, you're, you have to go in annually and review all of those safety data sheets and some, some departments have hundreds. Um, they're, they need to be reviewed annually to make sure they're current. If with the system, if a safety data sheet is updated by the manufacturer, it will automatically update in the library. Um, it would also include document management. So um, there are, depending on the, the programs that they need, like confined spaces or fall protection or respiratory protection, all of those require written uh, programs specific to the work center. All of that would be stored in the system. Um, so it could be, you could look at it at any time. So if OSHA shows up, I've got it all right there on my phone uh, for them. Uh, one of the most important parts of this is probably hazard reporting. Right now, hazards are not getting reported to me like I would like them to be. Um, we do have a, a paper process, and then that goes sent through inner office mail, and I don't get it for a couple of days. By then, we could have injuries, and that, that did happen uh, last year. So with this system, you scan a QR code, it brings up what the hazard, the information that I need. You fill it out, you hit submit, I get a notification on my phone. And then I could see it and I could go there. We have a document if you'd like to see a yeah. lot of the features that this yeah. provides. No, I think so. we're all for it. You don't have, okay. to, you yeah. don't have to sell it anymore. Well, and then you we, wanted to come back. Like to oh, no, no, no. Thank you <laughs> okay. so much for so then, touching on those for us. Thank you very okay. much. I do have two quick questions. Does it track employee certifications? It will. It will? Okay. And then um, this, this wouldn't replace any in-person training. Do we still have in-person training or would it yeah, identify no, a new would, of in-person okay. yeah, until, until, until we get the robots in to do that, right? What's that? Until we get robots to do this, it. This will help actually direct in-person training yeah. based on needs. Yeah. This, it with sounds the, really good. With okay. the certifications, okay. you put in the certification. If it expires after three years or four years or five years, you, there will be an email reminder. <laughs> automatically that goes in there. Good. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank good you. Job. Very thank good. You. Thank you. Next right. item, number 38, human rights. Memo regarding the joint efforts of human rights department and that community liaison, uh, inclusive liaison, page 45 and 46. Mayor and Council, uh, at your request, uh, I scheduled a meeting and had two council members, Council Member O'Kane and Council Member Shainer, uh, met with our inclusive Sioux City liaison as well as human rights director, uh, we talked through some issues and have agreed going forward we will meet uh, at least on a monthly basis to t talk about coordination to ensure that we are not duplicating and uh, going in directions we shouldn't be going. We should be working together and we are committed to doing that. Thank you, Bob, for doing that. You're welcome. Number 39, Parks, memo regarding total trail, miles, and future planning expansions, page 49 in your wrap-up packet. 35 miles. There you go, Matt. Where were we, 14 miles 10 years ago? 20 years ago, we were... We were 14 too, 20 years ago. That's <laughs> 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 the problem. We didn't build, build any for... When I started in 2014, so I'm going on nine years now, I think the number was 28. You were oh, going on nine oh, wow. years with the city? Yeah. You remember that first email I sent you? Yeah. That's I never even met you yet. 28 back in the 90s then, because you didn't build very many. Yeah, and, the, and actually the connections that are outlined in here, the ones that we did Connect. recently, they were smaller ones, but it made huge impacts. Right. It did. Yeah. And like last year, the Riverfront Trail on a mile and a half, that was the most crucial length in not only Sioux City, all of Siouxland. Nine years and the honeymoon can you fun. Yeah. <laughs> well, just I'm not sure about that, Mayor. <laughs> Keep pushing forward. He right. came at about the same time. Yeah. Yeah. He came just a little before you, didn't he? No, it was after. Just after. We didn't, we didn't oh. have a parks director. Yeah. We didn't? Who was managing all that? Uh, Asia Wallace was the division manager. It was a, not a department yet. Gotcha. And its own department. Because it was under public work. Yep. And they never got any funding because... Gordon and Carney stole it all for those darn streets rather than any kind of trail, right? <laughs> that was before their time. <laughs> I wasn't Neither of them were here either. So. <laughs> right. But as you can see, uh, over the next uh, four years with this Destination Iowa program, we'll be adding another 6.4 miles, not including 10.5 miles of uh, mountain bike trail. 
So lots of good stuff coming. Thank you. Good Thank, job. You. Thank you. Number 14, please. Discussion regarding staffing levels as well as funding options. Page 292 in the operating book. This is where the four officers come in. How much is that? Five dollars and fifty-eight cents, or eighty. <coughs> Five hundred and three thousand one hundred and sixty-nine dollars for four officers. The levy impact is five dollars and eighty-five cents on a typical hundred thousand dollar resident <laughs> annually. That's if we have to tax for every one of them. Yes, that's if we use tax for all right. of the funding. Yeah, we have to. Why? Where are you going to get money if you don't use tax? Cops are all tax. Well, no, the option there's no was, the option was discussed at the last budget meeting was the ability to use like a red flex or anything. Red you, can, you can, but you should not use that for permanent. I mean, I don't. But well, you I'm not saying that we're going to use it permanently because I know there is a possibility of a future risk of that account. But if we don't have to tax all of it this year. Why not use those funds there for safety? I think the public would appreciate the fact that we're using the funds for funding of the police. And then next year, our, that fund should even be a little larger next year because we don't have a full year of funds in that account, Teresa? 323,000. No. Right, but we haven't been collecting that money for From July years. 2022 to January. Yep, for six months, we have 300 six months. So I think, Unless that fund were to disappear, then we can tax for it at a later date if we're forced to. Move them. But to your point, though, this might encourage them to find some busier streets where they can collect a little bit more. If that would encourage them, they would have already done it. They have the wrong cameras. They're difficult to move. Mm -hmm. and that's true. They take a lot of work. Well, the chief doesn't want to hear, but that's a, the setup they have is terrible. Where are the cameras that we used to have on the interstate? They don't have them anymore. Oh, they trade them Stuff. in, or well, we never own them. We don't. Oh, own those them. right, right, but oh, so red flex moved them. Red flex took them. Okay. Hi, Chief. Hello, Rex Mueller, Police Department. Uh, just to answer your question, Julie, they no longer utilize those the trailer uh, mounted ones. In fact, those were in bad need of uh, repair when okay. taken off the interstate. So uh, they seemed very mobile. Is they, why I was asking. <laughs> yes, to some degree. Yeah, you bet. And I mean, these, the footprint was big, but yeah, the footprint was big and would be very difficult in some urban settings, which is why the kiosks are deployed. But as the mayor mentioned, uh, they're not as portable as advertised because of the weight of the batteries, primarily that run the devices. And it's not on a cart or anything, is it? No. Perhaps we should get some built. Well, the sad part is that. I don't, I don't understand why they didn't put some sort of solar deal on that, especially when you put them by a pole, you'd have a mount the solar mount to a solar, but I don't know. I'm not very, I've never been a big fan of Red Flex themselves, but that's probably, the, there probably aren't other vendors, so I'm. No, there, there are some other vendors. I've seen, I've seen some discussion on the Iowa Chief's website, which we weren't aware of, but I think Red Flex was bought out by a, another company, and so they're, we refer to them as Red Flex because that's what we're familiar with, but that's uh, actually a larger company that took them over. But, I mean, the, the problem is, for me, it's not about the money, it's change behavior. Well, when you see the revenue go in half, guess what? We've changed behavior. Yes. So we need to move them to change behavior somewhere else. I, Correct. I don't care what the DOT says. I'm tired of driving and having people pass me 80 miles an hour on the dang interstate again. It's, it's right. and you put some out there again. It's ridiculous right. the speed that's on that. You know, if, if the DOT was coming through town, is really monitoring that. They're going to they're going to tell you that the traffic speed has increased on the interstate dramatically. We made a, a thoroughfare through town. That was what we wanted. But when you get that, you get speed and potential for for bodily injury and. And no, I not, agree. It's I not think. really safe for the officers to be out there ticketing. Well, it's, it's very difficult because of the uh, uh, the Jersey barriers. Right. I mean, it's not you can't run traffic going the other way. There's no place to turn right. around and parking there uh, with uh, those speeds. And there's no doubt that since the cameras were removed, that we've seen the interstate speed 
uh, increase. Uh, it was kind of staggering when we did the speed study prior to the placement of the interstate cameras, what the speeds were. I mean, the amount of traffic that was over 30 miles per hour over the limit was, uh, you know, I'd, I'd have to look up the data, but it was kind of staggering. Uh, yeah. The decisions well, agreed, we need to change that behavior. That the decisions that people, and that's our end goal. I mean, right. this is, obviously, this is something that if we can modify behavior, we don't want to make revenue from any right. of this. Perfect. We have mission accomplished. If we can, uh, if we can, uh, uh, you know, train the motoring public to, hey, keep it at a reasonable level, everybody will be safer. So what do we have before us? Do, do we have the four officers in the can make no. whatever motion? Yeah, there's zero. The yeah, there's there's, there's zero in the budget right now. You'd have to make a motion to add any officers. Okay. And you think you'd have success filling those positions? Yes, in fact, we're about to begin a hiring, uh, you know, a new hiring process. We're uh, trying to uh, tweak our advertising message because we're trying to cater to. I know there was a discussion with Janelle earlier about bringing people into this organization. I think we have an incredibly supportive community. We have a supportive council. I think that we're in a very good place to recruit good personnel. Uh, we're making changes and discussing with uh, uh, the Civil Service Commission how we can make adjustments to that hiring to allow. Uh, for more frequent submission of applications, so we're not missing people that graduate, things like that, maybe uh, increase the frequency of our testing. Uh, we want to bring the best possible candidates here, and I think the environment in Sioux City is about as good as anywhere. Um, we enjoy the public support, the community policing that we do, makes this a great place to work, and we've got great people. So we will be working on that, and I know one of the things I discussed with all of you was losses. Well, just to give my staff an idea of losses. We, you know, I went through the org chart and we highlighted where our losses have been recently due to retirement, uh, military leave, uh, people on sick and injured, and the numbers are very challenging. So these four officers are incredibly important to us in that when we experience those unexpected losses, we can still maintain services. That's my primary goal. Would we like to uh, gradually increase to meet the demand? Absolutely. And, and you, you have spoken about this at the last meeting. But it's contending for the unexpected that we want to do to maintain essential services. Uh, we don't want to stop doing the things that we're doing <clears throat> because we're a service-oriented organization. You know, those customer service things that we do, when you call and there's a small, uh, you know, just a small theft or something, and we say we're going to come and do that, we don't want to stop doing those things. It's important to keeping the crime rate low and uh, numbers and resources and having officers there when we have losses that we don't expect uh, is critically important to public safety. Has there been an issue with retirement so that you'd have a far enough notice, advance notice, that you can fill? You well, know when, those when they participate in the drop program, then we have a locked-in date, and the city manager mentioned it at the last meeting. Those are things that we can hire in advance for, and we do what we call the pipeline hiring, where I know Officer Moore is going to retire at this date. We get somebody in the system. We hire them. We get them through the academy, through training, and the hope is that when they're done with training in a solo officer, that's the time that that other person is departing so there's no loss of services. It's the unexpected losses, the folks that retire early uh, or, uh, you know, or resign or move on. Uh, those are the ones that uh, create challenges for us because we can't expect those. And as this council mentioned, it's about a year roughly between hiring training uh, that they're able to operate independently. So that's a lot of catch up time. Okay. So, Teresa, yeah. if we consider, and I, I don't know if it would pass, but if we consider having adding four additional police officers when we make a motion at the end of the meeting for you to balance the operating budget so uh, it would that if you if you vote for it you what it would include that if it you would include that but then depending on what the final budget numbers are we could still make revisions to that don't we come, don't you bring it back to us for a final? Yeah, at the final approval, you could make changes to it at that time if you wanted to. Because right now I've lost track of the overall, impact. maybe you all have kept track of it, but I, I haven't, the overall impact it has on the budget and what it has on the, on the levy. Your action today will, be, will result in the final proposed budget that would be subject to approval at the March, March 13th meeting. Yeah, yeah. but you could, yeah. Make, you could amend it at that time as well. Okay. Well, so then I'll make a motion 
that we include in our operating budget the hiring of four additional police officers. Am I using the right terminology? Four additional police officers or? Police officers, yeah. Police conditional officers. comes in with the eligibility list and things like that. Those are oh, offers. That okay. And I, I think the question, Dan, for me then becomes too is, do you want to just use that as as taxpayer funding or? Yeah, let's just, just as a point in order, since he made a motion, I think it needs to be I'll second. second. I'll okay, second. there you go was just a, do you want to use any red flex or give direction of that or no I would once again I'd recommend that we not I to red flex red flex is very one-time possible in nature at any point the state could uh, move to eliminate speed cameras or red light cameras in addition we use it for other one-time expenses and have and we use it all whether it be for 411 which are medical payments for public safety or other public safety improvements. So we try to keep them to one-time expenses and not ongoing expenses, just because of the, the nature of it. It isn't your point, Alex, too, is that if the money's there, if the money's there, why not apply it to that for the, at least for the coming year? Well, we could, but then you're just gonna take it away from something else that would, we'd have to raise taxes for. That's true, too. That's, that's the only reason. We're still unpopular. Well, no, you I don't we're have trying to, to take it away from something else because it's not budgeted for something right now. Well, the problem is you got then you a bill before the state it. house right now that's going to increase the police and fire long-term medical costs and that, that we don't know what that number is, and that's what they've historically been able to handle those additional costs. Oh, well, we never know what the legislature is going to do to us because they've always been so fair and reasonable in their approach to local government. But, but yeah, but Alex, I, I detect right, a hint of sarcasm I'll, there, Mr. I'll let that go today. <laughs> but I'd rather increase taxes on something that the state is forcing us to do than something that we're adding. But, but the problem is, you don't get to raise. If they pass a law, you're going to certify this budget. Mm -hmm. Those laws pass at the 48th hour, 24th hour of the last day and you get stuck with that bill but you don't you've already certified your budget so and, and it, I, it sounds like a slush fund and that's a terrible word but if she doesn't have that flexibility it's a Can't problem cover it, right that, that's the problem that we get stuck with the cost after the fact Teresa, in the case of 411 payments we don't necessarily budget we just use this money to pay the 411 correct and then fix it during a budget amendment yep. right absolutely and but that's what i'm saying yeah. if they stick in this with case deal what would happen in the next year is that we would have less um fund balance beginning fund balance to balance the budget so that's what would happen right now we start the year with a large fund balance in general fund that allows us to keep that tax levy down we would have less of that which would again just push it would kick the can to the next year to do an increase if necessary but and this was my question when we get to 45 but in alex's question was that answered about are are the red flex revenues for the current year the 323,000? are yes. those spoken for are the, have those no no those are not spoken for they're sitting in a fund well they're spoken used for, for public you are using them for what you just said if you need yeah yes. at the end of the year if the funds are there we'll use for them for the 411. safety though right what? yes oh so, yeah they use yep. them for they ongoing, said, yep. like for example, what? Just for example, for example, the remodeling of the police department. A lot of that was. Yeah, some of the things that come up throughout the year were like um, when they did the um, addition at the fire station. They had some septic issues, and there was you know fifty thousand dollars. We would use that to supplement those. We always use it for public safety. And so what I was comfortable with, Dan, just so everyone else knows, is what I was thinking was not exhausting those funds or using all of them for this. I was going to propose that if we have that um, uh, fund balance and we know where it currently is, if we applied ha to these officers, if we covered two of them this fiscal year with that fund, that still leaves you almost 100000 in flex, and that's just over the course of six months. So you'll still have six months of growth on top of that 100000 and you covered those two additional officers at least this year. Tax just for the other. And then tax for the other two. So then it makes the tax burden only the, what, 250 or 275 or something per 100,000. That was going to be my proposal, Dan. I would, I'm not going to vote for four officers. I'm not opposed 
but I think you've got to work this in and see. I, I, I vote for two, and I don't care. I'd leave the, I would leave the tax portion or the funding portion to the finance. Tax. I just, I can't go for four. We're asking other departments to do a whole lot less, and I understand, but I think, you know, you want some sort of progression to show the council's good faith, and I think two officers personally does that, but I don't want to vote no, but I'm, I'm going to, but I want you to know why. It's not that I'm opposed to additional officers. Mayor, I don't want to speak against my own case, but you could make a motion to amend to do the two officers and see if you get a second and see if that passes then. I'll move that, and well, I, I would, as part of that motion, I would, would leave it to Teresa to determine the best course of action. I, I, and you know, if you can use some red flex, I'm fine with that. But I, I don't think we have a hard time selling to the general public. We added two police officers, and we're sorry, but it costs you two dollars and fifty cents less than a cup of coffee at Scooters to be able to do that. I think. I mean, I'd be willing to. 